Well, g'day YouTube and welcome back to the live stream. Oh, hello, there's a big bug right on my microphone. You can't be up there. Check the size of this. Look at this guy. See you later. How you doing? The tubes of the use. This is a YouTube only stream. Sitting down here, Crookhaven head style. Look at this. It's a beauty, isn't it? Beautiful place. We came down here before. Um, well, we made a video where we talked about lemon tree passage distilling gin and I asked you guys to give me recipes for what I should mix this with and I've got them all here and so we're going to uh, enjoy making some uh, gin cocktails. First of all, before we go any further, I want to verify that this is all working correctly, audio and all that jazz. Let me just have a little listen. Yeah, okay, we're good, we're good. So we're good. Uh, we do have a little bit of dappled light coming through the sky here. It's going to pop in and out of the clouds. Is. That's going to serve as a good thing and a bad thing. Um, mainly for me, not so much for you, but I guess a little bit of backlighting will be a little dubious. Um, but it is what it is. We can't really control that. Let me get into the chit chat and say hello. I see Tim. Tim Arscott. Good morning, grubby people. Grubby, Timski. Why grubby? It's actually afternoon, but time is only a state of mind. It's just you and me, Tim. It's just you and me here, my friend. You and me at this particular juncture. I don't mind that though. How you doing, Tim? What do you like when you drink gin? What's your favorite gin mix? Let me ask you. Now I've got a lot of things here to mix with. All of these have been suggestions from the chat. All these are ingredients that we need. Campari, something I've never had before. Noily Pratt, something I've never had before. That's a vermouth. Fernet Branca, that's something I've never had before. Green Chartreuse, something I have had before. Creme de Frambos, something I've never had before. Orange Bitters, never had that before either. I've seen it before. Uh, lime Juice, had that before. We got some oranges here. We're gonna need those for some jarnishes. Gotta love a good jarnish. We've got obviously the lemon tree passage distilling gin. Now I've got two bottles. This is the one that we're not, get him off there. This is the one that we're not gonna be opening. This is uh, gonna, it's gonna be my little savior. Savior? No, I'm gonna save this one. So we've already opened this one previously on the uh, video to taste it. Tim, audio and visual is great, Ben, thank you. Getting signal dropout though, but that may be at my end. That's definitely at your end, dude. I'm sitting pretty at seven and a half meg here. So this gin, I'm gonna just have a little uh, little sniff to here. Maybe a little taste, right? Maybe I'll go a little straight ski again. Yeah, I'm gonna have a little bit of this neat because it's got its own, by the way, I don't have a um, martini glass. So I've got a whiskey tumbler and I got a highball glass and that's pretty much all I've got. So we're not going to be going la di da di da we're just going to be going la di But let's have a little snifter of this Nitsky, because it has got its own particular botanical flavours. Let, uh, let me read out that again. Let me just get it in my... Get it into me! It is tasty. Very, very tasty. Very tasty, actually. So, this is Lemon Tree Passage Distilling. This is up kind of the distance we are from old Sydney town, again, north and on the coast, kind of like the, it's like the um, Nelson Bay, Port Stephens area, Lemon Tree Passage. So Mark Green and Susan Loy uh, and their little one, they opened up a distillery a little while back. Um, Marcus Monkey, old mate of mine from back in the day. This thing, very intriguing. Smoothed with local honey, Delicately spiced with Tasmanian mountain pepper berries, native acacia wattle seed, cinnamon, anise seed, angelica, and cassia. So there's a lot going on in this in this gin. You might argue, dude, that's got so much of its own flavour. Maybe you don't need to add anything to it, and that's why I'm just having a little little wee nifter here of a of a straight ski one. Um, Rob Mack, hey for Gibbs and fellow Yahoos, how you doing Robski? Good to see you man. I didn't give Tim a cheers either, Tim. That one's for you. Uh, Rob Mack! That one's for you man. By the way, it's a little warm here too. When that sun comes out, crikey! A little warm, not gonna deny that. A little warm back here. Go back behind the cloud. So that being said, shall we start with our first ingredients? 
because this is going to take a while to do, being that we've got so much to get through here. Don't forget these are user or user, these are viewer, givers we call them, givers. This is givers requests. So let me, um, let me pull up in my, uh, I got screenshots of the comments from that video. I got screenshots here. So let me just pull up the first screenshot. Dogecoin is up again, folks. What? If you're into the cryptocurrencies, you should have bought some Dogecoin. Let's go back. So the very first recipe comes from Chad Armstrong. Thanks, Chad. And he's got a few in here. Now he says, he says, I was gonna suggest some sweeter cocktails, but given how earthy the gin you've got is, I'll give you a few different options. The first option, who I just freaked out then, I thought I didn't bite. Gin and tonic. Equal parts gin and tonic over ice. Swap the usual lime garnish for a cinnamon stick. Well, <laughs> I did go ahead and buy something I've never bought before in my life. Cinnamon sticks. I do have some uh, tonic water here. Let me grab it out. It's Indian tonic water. All right, and uh, well, I'll close that back up because we don't need it. There's got a little bit of ice. Oh, we need ice though. We're gonna have to leave this out for the ice. So let me ask you this, Chad Armscombe. Chad Armstrong, are you here? Chad, 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 Chad! Are you here, Chad? I don't know if Chad's even here. If not, when it says equal parts, got a little kniffy here, got a little uh, a shot measurer. So when it says equal parts, are we going to suggest a single shot, given that Lemon Tree Passage is a little on the small side of these bottles. They're 500 mil, which is a little, you know, a normal size bottle is 700 mil. If you're gonna get like, like um, boutique, I guess you go down to like 650, but 500, that's a very small amount. So I'm thinking we should just go with standard shots, 30 mil, not, I was gonna double it, but let's just go regulation. Um, I can't see the chat while I'm looking at these ingredients, but uh, I guess I can remember this one. Equal parts gin and tonic over ice, swap the usual lime. So let's do this one first. Equal parts gin and tonic over ice. So let's get ice first. Thank you Chadsky for these ingredients, recipe trials and tribulations. Got a little bit of ice here, let's pop it in there. Yeah, it's enough ice, good amount. We'll keep this closed because I want the ice to stay ice cold. All right. We should also have the lemon tree passage distilling visible in the shot every time. Where is it? How are we going to do this? Let me just, uh, let me finagle this so it looks a little bit more, eh, artism. Okay. So, equal parts gin and equal parts tonic. By the way, I can't see a chat right now. I've got the screenshot open. I'll get back to that, but let's just pour this one out, huh? Equal parts gin and equal parts tonic. So this is just straight up. I'm gonna go half and I'm gonna go in my right hand here. One of each. One. There's one. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. That's the uh, Jinski Lemon Tree Passage. This is the tonic. Ooh, what was I saying? I was saying, get out of here, Flasky. Let's hit this up. Equal parts tonic water. Equal parts one of each? That can't be right, dude. That can't be right. It literally says, gin and tonic, equal gin and tonic over ice. Okay, one of each. Swap the usual lime garnish for a cinnamon stick. A cinnamon stick, folks. A whole stick? This, this thing only came with like, this only has three in it. A whole stick? That's what it says. Get him in there, you little beauty. All right, well, I'll let that uh, sort of do its thing, but that's what uh, Chad Armstrong has recommended. Equal parts gin to tonic over ice, remove or replace the lime garnish with a cinnamon stick. So I did. I might let that deplenish itself. Deplenish? I'm gonna let it sit there for a bit. Let me go back to the chit chat one stupin. Chit Chat is here. Uh, 
Hi to Greeny, if he's watching the replay, I did put this up on the uh, on the Lemon Tree Passage. Oh, cracky, that's really overexposed. I put this up on the Lemon Tree, I uh, tag Lemon Tree Passage in this on the status of the machines of face. So maybe they'll see it. Let me, um, is this supposed to get sloggy, sloppy? All right, let's give this a shot, huh? Cheers, is, uh, Chadsky. Wow, Woo wow, holy botanicals. Now that's already flavorsome out the wazoo. Tonic water's got similar kind of like botanicals, the flavorings. That's gonna go whoosh, dang and smack you around the skull, which it did with me. 50-50 gin and tonic over ice crystals is something I try. 50-50, so that's 30. So you're saying one and a half of this. Equal parts either way. Let's observe the uh, awesome barrels coming in here right now. It's offshore. It's, it's a big swell. I didn't go out today. I was a little intimidated. Uh, there's a competition on. I'm thinking about joining up to the um, Kalbara Beach Board Riders Club. Thinking about doing that actually. Because they got a competition on today and if I was out, if I was part of the club, I'd probably be inspired or not inspired, I'd probably be motivated to get out there in these conditions. But they're not out there, but that's a bit of a novelty break. I don't even know if you can see that if, off in the distance. Oh yeah, you can see it. There's barrels coming in there. Yeah, I just think if I if I got out with those, if I got involved in the bar in the Kalbara Beach board riders, then I would be engaging with more surfers and getting out and surfing different breaks, and you know, it'd be fun. Man, I should be I should restream this onto onto D Live, but I'm not going to because this is an exclusive YouTube stream. I don't do this very often. I would always do the dual streamses. But this is a singular stream. Should I be licking the cinnamon stick? Give me a lick. Crikey. I kind of want to break that up. What should I do? Should I stir it with this or break it with this? I'm doing what I'm... I'm doing what I'm feeling. That's a good combination. I do like that. Cinnamon stick. How about these cinnamon sticks? They're from Hoyt's? The cinnamons? Hoyt's changes the mood of food. Hoyt's cinnamon sticks can be mixed to taste with sugar, caster sugar for all kinds of cakes, toast, butter, to gives, gives loveliness to milk product. Oh, okay. Hoyt's, I've never heard of the brand. I mean, Hoyt's cinemas? Yeah, right. What a funky world we exist in. What a funky planet we cohabitate. I've only had one gin, folks. There's gonna be a bunch more. We've got a bunch of stuff to try here. Look at all this. Noily Pratt, heck yeah. We've got oranges, we've got orange bitters. We got limes. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. The only thing I didn't bring is water to clean. Like I was going to clean the glass after every. I didn't bring that though. What's happening, Tim, in your neck of the woods? What's going down in Tim Ariscog Town? Oh, this just gets better as that um, as that cinnamon stick gets wetter and wetter. This just gets nicer and nicer. Yeah, you feeling it? You digging it? Can we put this on a bit more of an angel? I could probably go a bit more like that, right? Are we level, Hendrik? Hendrik, I need the H man. You're a bit dark, gives. Yeah, Rob. What'll happen is um, because the sun's going to be hitting in and out of those clouds, I'm a little reluctant to change it too much. I could change it to that, but then as soon as that comes out, it will go BAM! But then again, there's not much latency on the YouTube machine, so we should be able to work it out pretty quick. But yeah, it's going to be kind of waffling. It's going to wobble in and out of the sky. Look at look at how beautiful it is up there, man. Uh, Whoopsie! It's a pretty, it's a very uh, beautiful scene here today. Very, very uh, stoked. Look at these barrels, man! It's offshore, as you can tell. There's nobody out there, but crikey! Yeah, pretty happy to uh, to be down here, rumming it up, rumming it up. Man, I wish uh, Lemon Tree Passage made rum too. <laughs> pretty nice, pretty nice. Okay, so so far we have. We have one drink which is pretty standard in terms of gin. This is a pretty standard mix, right? A gin and tonic. 
pretty much down the line. The only funky addition here is the cinnamon stick. Other than that, we've just gone El Traditional. I reckon that's too... I'm gonna be forever changing that. Yeah, I don't want to blow out the skies. I don't want to blow the sky out, but it's the only way. To... I mean, the dynamic range on the GH5 is pretty good, but not that good. M middle of the day, too. So yeah, this gin, fair crack. Incredibly tasty, incredibly tasty. It does have a weird, I noticed this too the other day, probably can't tell it in that one, but when you let it settle, inside the bottle, the, the liquid does like a weird, it's not legs, but it just does a weird dissipating across the glass. How do you get out to those barrels, Rob Mac? Yeah, true. You'd have to take a, you'd have to take a boat. Either go straight out, like uh, um, um, boat, like punt, I guess they call it, punt it out, take the boat out straight to the spot, have a mate sort of driving around and staying out there, or go across to Conorong Island and then walk off the front there, um, the break wall. It'd be a pretty hairy experience, like I, I, I'd do it, I wouldn't do it alone, hell no, but I'd do it with crew and that's kind of why I was thinking about if I joined up with the, um, the board riders club, maybe I'd make friends with people and they'd be like, oh man, we're going to go out, you want to come with us and, you know, a bit more social. I've seen dudes going across there, you know, paddling, I've seen a dude paddling across, like literally just paddling across. And I don't know if I'd be too keen to do that. Let's not forget the time that we were live streaming on one of these jetties, which you just can't see, they just had a frame. And uh, a massive bull shark came right up and I just got the camera and went, yeah, there's a big shark. It's like as big as this table. Just went straight and we got a clean shot of it right next to the stream. Um, and then the next time I was down there, there were kids swimming literally, like literally where the shark was. Now that's not, um, that's not unusual, really. I mean, sharks, of course there are sharks in there. Just a little bit more, confronting when you see one right there <laughs> and bull sharks are typically aggressive and this is a river mouth and so there's plenty of activity going on feeding out there like you know the water's coming out from the rivers and dead animals and all kinds of crap and the sharks are out feeding there but I'd do it I'd surf there but I wouldn't surf alone it, it actually I thought I saw a dude just then Could just be my eyes, but I reckon I can see two dudes out there. It's really difficult to be able to... I can't make that definition out any longer. My, my eyes aren't what they were, but I thought I saw two dudes go. One get a wave, one go over the wave. Um, it looks like it's closing out anyway, so... <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, it's closing out, man. I'm not going out there. Um, let's change that, because the sun's out. All right, gin and tonic. Yeah, that's all right. That's pretty good. I reckon I'm going to keep this cinnamon stick happy. I'm going to keep that uh, slightly... I, don't, I mean, I reckon you can reuse these cinnamon sticks, right? Where are your binoculars? Yeah, they're at home. I didn't think... I, I, I like looking at that spot because it, it does... Im, like, it impresses me, but... I mean, realistically, I, I think... I think... Oh, wow. I think that wave's beyond me. Like, that's beyond my level right now. I mean, and arguably, there's barrels like that off the front of my place anyway. Uh, probably not as good as that, but... I don't know, I'm talking myself out of it here. Uh, I'm not even a very good surfer. I'd consider myself a KK, and I'd label that as a keen kook. <laughs> one day I'm gonna get barreled though. Properly, not just a... What do they call it? A cover over. I'm gonna get a real one. I watched a Nathan Florence video on, um, I use Odyssey, I don't really use YouTube too much anymore. Hello YouTube, I don't use you much. I've, I watched Nathan Florence on Odyssey and he had this really sketchy paddle out that he did in this really, um, like a rocky area where he had to sort of like hop over the rocks and then get along the beach and then keep walking around the peninsula and then paddle a bit more, then walk a bit more. It was really, really sketchy. And he did all that, it was like, of a 15 minute video, there's about eight minutes of him t like doing the walk, the the swim, the paddle, trying to sk skip these rocks. 
and the second he gets out, he's like, oh, here comes a wave. He takes it, gets barrel. First wave, complete barrel, and it's like, dude, that would take me seven years to do that, huh? And you just, you did it in the first wave. All right, well, gin and tonic went down a treat. I'm gonna take out the cinnamon stick and we will save that for later. I don't know if you can reuse it now, I'm assuming. I'm just gonna put it on the, on, the, on the table here. We don't have any fresh water to clean the glasses with. That's a bit of a shame. But anyway, let us move on to drink number two. So let's go back to the screenshot from Chadsky. Chad, thank you for putting these screenshots down, man, or for putting these suggestions down. So that was his first one, a gin and tonic. So the next one is a Negroni, Negroni. One ounce of gin, one ounce of Campari, which is this, which I've never had before. We're gonna put this out, well, where we put it? We'll put it, we'll put it there. Uh, so one shot of gin, one shot of Campari, one shot of red vermouth. For the vermouth, I recommend Noily Pratt. So this was extremely difficult to find, but there it is, I got it. So one of each of those and the Jinski. So we're gonna put these three together. Yep, 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 yep. What does it say? Uh, one ounce gin, one ounce Campari, one ounce vermouth. Garnish with an orange peel. So no ice in this one. No ice, okay. Okay, well, let's do this. Uh, we'll go with the gin first. We know that the gin, what it tastes like. Yeah, yeah. So a uh, shot of Jinski. Yeah, yeah. All right. Hell yeah, yeah. Jinski, Dunskis. Uh, one shot of Noily Pratt, Vermouth of France. Noily Pratt and Co. 1818, 1813 in Rogue, Prat de France, 16% by volume. Noily Pratt Rogue, Rouge, is a beautifully crafted, Noily Pratt Rouge is beautifully crafted by the sea in the south of France using the finest white wines. Some of these wines are selectively aged in oak casks and gently infused with the finest quality aromatic herbs and spices sourced from around the world to create the unique taste of Noily Pratt. Spicy notes of saffron, cloves, and cocoa beans. Perfect chilled or on its own with a twist of orange or in cocktails. Ah, yeah, Noily. Noily me Pratt. Oh, holy crikey. That's weird. That smells like a barbecue. What? What the heck? It smells like onion. Dude, that smells like onion on a barbecue. Kind of. Not really, not even like, not even close to it. That's weird. All right, Noily Pratt. Ooh, it's not red, it's like... Ah, oh, spilling it here, folks. Someone's having a fight down there. Noily Pratt. Wow, look, look at the color, it looks like a, looks like a flat coat. Oh, I got a bit of that on my finger and it tastes like heaven. Noily Pratt, okay. Over there you go. And now we've got Campari. David Davadi, Dav Davadi Campari, Milano, so it's Italian, Italian. Campari tonic, it's got our ingredients here. Doesn't say much about the product, 25% by volume. One of these, yeah, one of these, one of those, one of everything. Here we go. Now this is red, as you can tell by looking at the freaking bottle. Yeah, yeah. Campari. Campari, am I saying that wrong? Camp, Campari, no, I'm saying it right, Campari. Why are all these flies landing on the, glass when there's nothing on the glass. What was the other thing again? A twist of lime or something? Uh, garnish with an orange peel. 
One ounce gin, one ounce Campari, one ounce red vermouth, garnished with an orange peel. For the vermouth, I recommend Noily Pratt red vermouth. This is the second suggestion from Chad Armstrong. I'm gonna go back to the chat, because I haven't been seeing it recently. Shyla Rose! How you doing, Shyla? Did you get to the post office? I did indeed. I did indeed. I picked it up. I picked it up. I haven't opened it. I picked it up. Net TV. How you doing, Netski? How you doing, man? Forgot this was on. You should set up shop there. Bartender Ben on by the beach. B B B T B. Bartender Ben on by the beach. Wow. That'd be cool. Hey, Shala. I had two nights worth of gin last night. Oh, crikey, Net TV. Smells like burning snag sizzle. Have you ever had that, Shala? That, that's that's what that smells like. Oh, shit. Doing the quiet stuff for today, Net TV. I feel you, man. So, that one doesn't call for ice. Should I just assume it? Should I just assume and add ice to it? I'll leave it up to you guys to decide. While you're deciding, I'm gonna get a little peel of this orange off. Got a kniffy here. You call that a knife? I'm gonna peel a little bit of uh, orange peel up. You let me know whether I should put a little bit of ice in here. The recipe doesn't call for ice, but I'm gonna... I'm almost assuming it calls for ice, or it means it's uns unspoken of that it needs ice. Let's go a bit of orange peel here. How much peel should I get? I guess about that. That much? Okay. What do you say for the ice? Open it on stream today or tomorrow. Uh, I'm not streaming today on DLive, Charlotte. This one will take place at the DLive. Um, there won't be a stream on DLive today. Unless I get really, really trashed. My sister's coming down um, later on and do a late stream. I don't think I will, though. Uh, what do you say? That's that's the mix there. Should I add ice to it? It, it looks like it needs ice, right? That looks like it needs ice. I don't want to ruin Chad's recipe, but maybe he just neglected to put that in. Hey, there's a big spider web up there. What do you say? I'll let you Yahoo's decide. Ice or no ice? Net TV, hey Rob, Rob Mac, what do you say, folks? Ice or no ice? I'll let you Yahoo's decide. We've had Campari, we've had equal parts Campari to Lemon Tree Passage Gin and Noily Pratt and a garnish of an orange peel. Now, do we add ice to it or not? I'll let you Yahoo's decide that little technicality. Do we add ice? Do we add ice to this beverage or not? That's what it looks like right now, as correctly measured from Chadsky. I'll let you Yahoo's decide. Are we adding ice to this or not? Try with and without. Good call, Rob Mac. Of course, I should, but what a great solution because he, before I put it in, I can try before and then after. Of course, of course. I'll cheese that. The simplest solution. All right, let's try it. Oh, hello. We are we, we, we. Okay. Okay, that's a little, that's a little bitter. It's a little bitter. You know, I would work on that. A little ice. A little ice would fix that bitterness. What have we got in here? A little ice. There we go. I'll add a little more to the situation. You know what? The, you know what the interesting thing is, and I've already looked through, so I know. None of these recipes call for shake it, shake it, shake it. None of them do. I find that unique. That looks rad, though, doesn't it? Orange peel. Campari, Noily Pratt, and Lemon Tree Passage Distilling Gin. Looks delicious. It's a little, little on the bitter side. Yeah, I'm not a... Chad? 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 I'm not really digging that, if I'm being honest. I'm not really digging that. Yeah. It's got like a little... At the end of it, a little... It's not bad. What would it be that's making it like that? Would it be the Noily Pratt? Yeah, it's this. It's the Noily Pratt that's giving you this little, um... That drink is gonna taste pretty orangey. 
Did you carry all that stuff there? Yes, I did, Charlotte. I carried it on this. I had one on the back, I had one on my back, and I had one in the front. Here's all the, here's all the crap that I brought. iPad, all that crap. <laughs> I wasn't going to mention it, but seeing as though you brought it up, yes, I did indeed carry it all. <laughs> Uh, and I drove very, very slowly. I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to fall over. Anything for the stream, you know, you know, you know? Oh, it's all for the stream, huh? Huh? Alright, you think there's too much orange peel in here? I don't think there's too much orange peel. Dedication, dedication. Well, you guys all chose what I bring. You guys all said you gotta get this stuff. How hard was it to get this? This took a month to get, right? The creme de framboise. We're gonna take a look at that in a minute, I guess. Observe, observe, observe the view. Look at this. Look at this beautiful vista. That's to the west. Sun will be setting over there at some point later on. To the north. This is a beautiful place. Very beautiful. Vista everywhere. Barrels, fishing people, sun. Gin, great, great. I kind of like this more with ice, definitely. The ice gives this a little bit more. Instead of just being like, ah, it's more, it's a little bit more smoother. Don't like that. Just got to get a nice pleasantness, pleasantness. I mean, I'll try anything though, of course. I wonder, is it the Lemon Tree Passage distilling gin that's giving it that bah? Can, maybe these two don't go so well together. Maybe that's what we're seeing. They don't go, they don't join the forces too well. Maybe, let me just give it a sniff. See, this one's got a, like a sweet, tangy smell. This one's got like a, yeah, it smells, it smells like burnt, um, burnt, uh, burnt onions on a barbecue to me. Then again, I'm no connoisseur. I've never had that before. Probably won't buy it again. Mind you, I'm more of a whiskey, right? I'm more of a whiskey and rum guy. So this is already out of my league, I guess. Not out of my league, but out of my ballpark, more, more or less. As the Shoalhaven River gently cascades towards the Tasman Sea, the day grows longer for you and me. Crikey. Well, Lemon Tree Passage Distilling, find them on Facebook. You can order on their on their Facebook machine, take you to their website, bam, you'll get your own. Delightful. Tasty. Yeah. My fingers are a little sticky. I do like the orange garnish in there though, that's a little little addition. Hello? Mayunas? Wow. YouTube streams are funny, aren't they? They're very quiet considering 20,000 subscribers. YouTube is like a ghost town. Da -na 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 yeah. Big crow. Oh well. It is what it is. The tubes of the U. I'm just impressed that, um, well, I'm not impressed anymore, but I'm still slightly impressed that you can even, you know, create YouTube content. How, I mean, go back 10 years, this was not even a thing. Well, it was, but go back even 15 years and it definitely was not a thing. Video, like, even, like, imagine live streaming back then. Not even a chance. 
Not even a chance. A rooty toot toot. Well, don't everybody speak to me at once. Crikey! Hello. Oh well, you know. I'll just sit here myself then. Fine, fine. Probably should put some sun cream on my face. Net TV, thank you for asking a question, man. Uh, what would the Pratt be like with some soda water? Ooh, that's an interesting idea. I don't have any soda water with me, um, but I will let you uh, freestyle it when we come to the conclusion of the recommendations. I'll definitely take a freestyle, or one or two, depending on how the stream's going, I'll take a freestyle mix of the ingredients we have here, or once we get them all out. Well, we got all the, the, the booze out, but we do have another mixer in there as well. But I'll take suggestions for sure. Well, that's the second recommendation from Chad Armstrong. He's not here in the chat, but we did try his first one, which was a regulation gin and tonic, half, half each. Instead of the regular garnish of lime, we used a garnish of a cinnamon stick, of which I still have here. His second, his second request was uh, equal parts gin, Noily Pratt, Campari, and a lemon, uh, skin, a lemon wet, a lemon slice, a lemon rind, lemon rind. Now, I'm not really favoring that one. I probably wouldn't do that again. However, we can uh, dismantle it and get rid of the orange peel, being that it is biodegradable, as is the ice. He has another one though. Let's see if uh, Chadsky can redeem himself here. His, in the same screenshot, he's got another one here. Now this one is called a boy, Bioyu, Bioyu, Baju, B-I-J-O-U, Baju. Uh, one ounce gin, one ounce red vermouth. So one ounce of Noily again, one ounce of green chartreuse chartreuse and a dash of orange bitters well so the only thing I haven't well the two things I haven't had here I've not had orange bitters before uh, and I haven't I have had chartreuse before this is vermouth I, I remember this from Canada it's vermouth right no it's not okay I thought got that wrong chartreuse product manufactured from complete natural ingredients up to its very color is advised to be taken on the rocks Okay, I thought this was a, a vermouth. It's not. Okay, well, either way. Chartreuse. 55%. will knock me over. So what we're going to do, folks, we're going to uh, go for it. So we're going to take a equal parts of all. Is that right? Equal parts. Yeah, one, one, one. Yeah, equal parts, except for the dash of orange bitters. So let's... Lemon tree passage distilling it up. Add the gin into the... Oh, 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 crikey, it went a bit overboard there. Okay, okay. Not too bad, not too bad. The gin. Now, we go with what we already know, the Noily Pratt. One part, or one shot ski. Noily Pratt, Noily Pratt, ta 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 
that's the Noli Pratt. Now, the green Chartreuse. All right. This, this smells like a, um, smells like a real sweet cognac. Is that what these are? Are these like made from, is this like, is this like wine fermented into like whiskey barrels? Chartreuse, right. Definitely smells like a white, white grapes. Oh, it's so thick. Holy balls. Dude, that's like a thick syrup. That does look rad. Yeah, it's got like a thicky, syrupy sort of viscousy side to it. Uh, Angostura, Angostura orange bitters. A dash of this, a dash, right? It's got a little stopper on it, so we just go a little splashing there, I guess. That's a dash. Orange bitters. Now let me go back to the chit chat and see what you yahoos suggest with this. We'll probably go some ice on this as well. Uh, I don't like orange flavors in my gin much. Prefer lemon or lime. A lot of these requests were calling for replace the regular lemon or lime with a cinnamon stick. Get funky, right? Well, here we go. This is the last request from Chatsky. It is equal parts green chartreuse. Noily Pratt, Lemon Tree Passage Distilling Gin, and a dash of orange bitters. No ice at this point, we'll add some rocks to it in a second, but let's give it a shot, give it a shizzle. See, I'd rather that than the other one for sure. That's got more of a, I guess it's more thick. It's got more of a gutsy, oh wow, there's an aftertaste there though. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. Let's grab some icicles. Ice goes in. Yeah, I'm, I'm, um, I know I'm not a gin guy, so maybe this whole experiment is wrong. I, I, I don't dislike this. I like this better than the, than the second one. Gin and tonic, yay, yay. The extra ingredients, meh, meh. On the rocks, it's better, it's better. A little better, a little better. Yeah, might have a moment alone with this folks because the chat is not really going off, mate. There's nobody out there. I don't know what I was thinking. I can't see anybody. I'm this much closer, therefore my eyes work better. Yeah, this has got a, um, this has definitely got like a, not bitter, but it's got a, um, it's definitely got a little twist to it at the end. It's like, as you, as you remove it from your mouth, it's got this little, huh, little aftertaste going downtown there. It's not bad. It's not, it's not something I'd go ape for though. With and without ice. Yeah, that's the best way to do it. Try, try it both with and without. I think the sweetness of the green chartreuse, the thickness of it makes it a, a bit, bit more palatable, if that's the word.
It sounds like you'll be not be ordering any of these at the bar, Rob Mac. I won't be ordering any of these at the bar, dude. I um, I like trying this, but it's also, you know, it's solidifying in my mind that I'm not really a huge gin guy. Like, I don't dislike gin, but if someone said, "Welcome to my bar. What would you like?" My first choice would not be a gin. It would be a whiskey or a rum, flat out, like hands down, and it would be. It would be pretty easy. Well, hang on, it'd be a whiskey or, or a rum or a beer, but the beer would have to be a dark, big, fat, meaty, heavy beer. Not a, not a, not a like a summer, clear, golden amber ale. No, I want a big, fat. I want the darkest, blackest, thickest, gluggiest. I want to be able to pick that up and sip from it and have nothing come out until the glass gets vertical. That's how thick I want that beer. I don't make beers that thick though. <laughs> but yeah, gin is like, gin is interesting. A gin, to me, gin is more like a, um, it's like you're walking through a garden, like you're getting all the, it reminds me of Switzerland. I just had that, wow, that was weird. I just had like a, like an endorphin rush. It reminds me of being in Switzerland. Just the smells of like the farmland, the garden, the bees, the, just the different little, weeds and, and the fragrances that were in that place yeah that's what gin reminds me of not that we drank gin in switzerland at all not not even never but that's just the vibe that i get right now yeah mind you that could be the gin talking well what else would it be it just had like this you know when like something takes you back something like it takes you right back to a spot i just had that vision then or that it's like in my synapses, right in my head. I was almost back there momentarily. Synapses? Snap synapses. I'm not a gin drinker at all, Rob Mac. If there is nothing else to drink, then maybe. Yeah, I drink my gin with soda water only, 50-50 or stronger as the night goes on. Yeah, okay, what did you drink last night then? What Was that what you were hitting last night? What was the occasion for you last night? And how much did you drink? What, what gin did you have last night? It's kind of intriguing that you had gin too, like given this stream and, and all that. That's, so it's a mildly interesting coincidence. A mildly interesting coincidence. What a great name for an album. A mildly interesting coincidence. Dude, take a note of that. I'm gonna make a note of that. A mildly interesting coincidence. A mildly, whoops. A mild, mildly, interesting coincidence that's got a great ring to it i like it when words fall out of my mouth like that just you know just popped out of nowhere i didn't even think about that as i was saying it, it just came out it's my dad's birthday even though he is dead oh wow okay i gotcha oh dude that's kind of worded pretty pretty uh, abruptly but okay well congrats to your to your late father how long's it been man how long's it been since you since your dad died and i hope you had a good time i mean i understand why you uh why you drank all the gin now yeah fair enough man it's not good is it death it's gonna get us all might as well have a good time in between There's already a nice taste in the gin, why spoil it with other flavors? That's true, that's true. Five years ago, oh wow, so pretty recent. Yeah, okay, dude. Yep, all right. I can feel you, man. I can feel you. How's the rest of your family? How, the, how do they feel? How do they cope? How do they cope with that? Cheers, uh, cheers to, your old, to your late father, your old man.
Yeah, it was sad. Just uh, a stroke then died one year later. Oh, wow. Dude, a stroke. At what age, man? What age? A stroke. It's either a stroke or cancer that gets everybody, right? You very seldom hear someone go, oh, my dad died or my mum died. It's like, oh, okay, what happened? Oh, nothing, nothing. Nah, she just they got, a, they got old, you know. Pretty good life, nothing. Just old age, just died. Oh, okay. Not sad? Yes and no. Like, the other the other alternative is, is, yeah, just had a stroke and then died. It's like, that's ripped off, eh? Hey? Yeah, that's not, that's... That's the abruptness of that. It's like, wow. It does It does serve a purpose though, doesn't it? It serves to show you that it's like, as much as you enjoy, as much as you can enjoy yourself, it's, it's temperamental. Well, it's temperamental, but then again, oh man, we're gonna get too deep here, but look at the pelicans fly. Did you guys see the pelicans? I hope you did, they came right through. Or I hope they came right through. Yeah, they did, I see the playback, oh man. They were, they were in good framing too, crikey. Um, yeah, it seems like temperamental to, to you and I because this is all we know, right? But then again, this could just be a test. This could be the starting... Dude, maybe we should change the subject, but I, if you want to get deeper on this, I think we need a campfire and we need the sun to go down and we need a wax philosophical, which we're not going to be doing today. Oh yeah. Let's just say I understand why you drank all the gin last night. They look like jet fighters going past. They came right in close, eh? This is really, and they were in formation too. Why do birds, I know that wasn't really a good example of it, but why do, why do birds, like typically more than one bird, why do they fly in formation? What's with that V shape they do? It's gotta be aerodynamics, right? It's gotta be aerodynamics. The birds know. They'll, they'll, they know. I feel like they know. Got to bounce, Gibbs. Catch you later. No worries, Rob Mack. Thanks for thanks for swinging by, man. Take care, dude. See you next time. How are we for light there? I guess we could go down a notch. Where are we? That's up, dude. Go down, and we could also angel that around a little, a little like that. We need Hendrik in here to tell us if we're level. Well, oh, oh, Hendrik's got a good eye for that. Started early and 12 hours later went to bed substantially sozzled. Sozzled. That's a word for you. Sozzled. Getting sozzled. Getting inebriated. Getting heckled. Uh, getting shickered. Getting sozzled. Shit faced, mate. Shot faced. That actually, that beverage is tasting better the more of it I have. The first taste was like, oh yeah. I can't say the same about the one before it though, but this one, it is feeling, it is getting easier and more enjoyable. It's got a real, it's got a real liqueur -y. it's almost like the center of like a chocolate liqueur, that kind of vibe. Yeah, that's what that's got, that's what that's given me. Get him out of there. Go on. Out you go. Get him out of there. Get out of there. Get out of there. Go on. Out you go. Big fly. Go away. Don't come back. 
Would that one be better without the orange bitters? Ooh, that's actually a good question. Let me just give that a, I didn't quite smell that one. See, the orange bitters, these two are very similar, I feel. Now you might go, come on dude, Noily Pratt and orange bitters. They both got a real, this has got a real strong, um, burnt thing to it. Whereas the orange bitters has just got a real uh -huh. bittery, a bittery sweet citrusy vibe going on. I don't know if it would be better with or without it because maybe they play off each other nicely. I don't know. Yeah, interesting idea though. I'm not too sure, I wouldn't know how to make these mixes. Like if I was to make a mix, I'd be going with like, you know, like some Coke or some ginger ale or something. Whereas this has all come up with, like currently, aside from the tonic water, we haven't mixed anything with uh, a mixer. We've just been combining alcohols together. So you could argue that that's a base alcohol. This one definitely is at 55%. That's stronger than the, that's stronger than the gin. So that's definitely a base. That's the start of a drink. Yeah, we've been mixing all of them together. So coming up with something, I should be pretty twisted by now, right? I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm a little uh, cozy here, but I'm not, ah. I'll be getting there though. But I find that intriguing that all the recipes we've, we've hit so far have called for more alcohol, more alcohol. Is that how you got to enjoy gin? Just smother it with other alcohol? Because the classic gin and tonic, that's nice, but that's just this, the gin the base alcohol and then a mixer whereas everything else has been like hammer the crap out of the alcohol you flaming alcoholics getting me this drunk on a Saturday I gotta drive this shit home too be going like this uh, bang hope not I'll go slow What flavor is the chartreuse? I don't know. I thought it smelled and tasted at first like a um, white wine whiskey, like like a um, like a cognac. That's what I thought when I first taste when I first smelt this. Cause I didn't taste it. I just smelt it. It reminds me of cognac. Totally. It's like a cognac. It's like a cognac with chlorine. What? What am I getting chlorine from? What? Hold on a second. Dude, I can, I can smell chlorine. That's weird. I'm not gonna lie, when I smell something, the first thing that comes to my mind was chlorine. Swimming pools, right? Like, swimming centers. Shyla Rose! I feel the sun intensifies the alcohol percentage. Does it? Come on, sun. Rain down on me from a great height. Well, let's move on to the next beverage. So that was uh, all of, yeah, that's the last one from Chad Armstrong. Thank you, Chad. So we tried a gin and tonic. We tried a Negroni and a Biju or Baiju. Next on the list is from Shal Rose. This is called the Hanky Panky. Ingredients, oh, a shot and a half of gin, a shot and a half of sweet vermouth. So we'll get the ingredients out. Sweet vermouth, which is, the sweet vermouth is this one, the Noily Pratt, right? Yeah. Five mils of Fernet Branca, a drink I've never heard of, nor seen or owned before, but I have a bottle here, Fernet Branca. Orange twist to garnish got the orange here and ice the method add the gin the vermouth and the fernet branca and ice to a tall glass bingo bango stir to combine got a stirrer and strain into a martini glass use your imagination that's a martini glass uh, Jarnish with the orange twist Let's do it. Let me just verify though, Charlotte, what vermouth were you... I've only got one vermouth, haven't I? 
Campari's not a vermouth. That's the only vermouth I've got, the Norley Pratt. Unless that's a... No, the Chartreuse is not a vermouth. Let me just com confirm that with you, Charlotte. Jake in the house. G'day, Jake. How you doing, man? Welcome to the Streamski. I'll give you a little cheers. Charlotte Rose, when you said vermouth, you were referring to sweet vermouth, which is Norley Pratt, right? That's the only one I've got, the vermouth. Wow, Chartreuse is made with 130 plants in it. Dude! That doesn't, that, that doesn't surprise me. Best drank over ice to bring out the flavors. Right, right, right. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm glad I'm hitting it with ice then. Charlotte Rose, are you good with that? If this is the vermouth we use, the sweet vermouth, the Noily Pratt. This is the hanky panky, hanky panky. Get out of there, Flyzers. What are you doing over here? Just in case Charlotte doesn't come back, I'll go with it anyway. So we're going equal shot, equal measure gin, equal measure... She said yes. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, perfect. Let me go back to the ingredients. Thank you, Charlotte. So let's go 45 mil gin. So that's a shot and a half of Ginsky. This is the shot glass here we're measuring with. One and a half. Hang on. Got to add it to a tall glass. Tall glass. Shot and a half. There's a shot, and a half skis, that's a half skis, shot and a half skis, gin skis, look how this is creeping up towards the table here, let's go back a little, uh, 45 mils sweet vermouth, so 45 mils of Noily Pratt, so that's a shot and a half of Noily Pratt, there's a shot, And a half skis. Oh, it's a little, little slight more than, than that. Just the way it came out was like, oh, I'm a little excited here. Get off there, fly skis. There you go. A shot and a half of Noily Pratt. And now, for the first time today, Fernet Branca. Fratella, Fratelli Branca Distillery. Milano, another Italian beverage here. Uh, the International Bitters. So we're, low, we're going bitter again here. Since the year 1845, the secret formula of Fernet Branca has been based on an infusion from a unique blend of selected blossoms and rare aromatic herbs, carefully, oh sorry, herbs for you Americans, carefully aged in the historic Branca cellars. Okay. 39% by volume, big pelicans. Well, we only need five mils of this, so let's open the shiz, get a little snifter here. Oh, wow. You know what this smells like? Crikey. This smells like an old library which has been closed up for 30 or 40 years. There's just books and there's dust and there's like you know, like a bit of light coming through a window with a crack in it. Heaps of sawdust on the floor. An old piano that's well out of tune. Photos of old people, you don't know who they are, but you know that they're old. That's, that's, this has got age in it, this bottle. This, there's, there's, there's history in this bottle. Damn, that's a weird, that's a weird vibe to get. What are you doing in there, fly? There's been a fly in here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hose this down. Hose it down, I'm gonna just get a bit of ice. Just get a little bit of ice in there. There's been a fly crawling around in there. Man, Fernet Branca. Is that Italian for I'm an old prick? That's what it feels like. We only need five mils of it. Now, if this is a 30 mil, so that's a, fifth, that's a 30 mil, that's 15 mil, so that means a third of this would be five mil. We only need four mil though, five mil. So we'll just go a third of this. Hang on, I've got to do it this way so I can tip it easier. Uh, a third of that size. There you go, there's a third. In you go. Fernet Branca. Old libraries are plenty. What was the last thing? Orange twist to garnish and ice. Method, add gin, sweet vermouth and fermanca branca to a tall glass. Stir to combine and strain into a martini glass. Stir to combine 
and then strain it. Why am I straining it? Straining it for why? Why am I straining it? There's nothing in to be strained. Oh, add the ice, you wall wombats. All right, let's get some ice. Here we go with some ice. Stir to combine and then strain it. Oh, so you don't want the ice to go into the glass. Got to love a good stir. Strain it into a martini glass. So use your imagination here, folks. This is a martini glass. This isn't gonna stir properly. This isn't gonna work, dude. What? So we don't want the ice in there. Is what this is the way they drink it, right? We don't. Want, we don't want the ice in there. So now. The other thing was a orange twist to garnish. An orange twist. Let's get a section of this. Get that mozzie off my hand. Orange twist to garnish. <laughs> Look at my orange twist. <laughs> nailed it. Absolutely nailed that orange twist. You want to learn how to do an orange twist? You come to the right place. That is a brilliant looking orange twist. Of course, you've got to use the imagination that you were born with, but uh, Hanky Panky, Charla Rose. Ah, shit, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Charlotte, for the Hanky Panky recipe. Again, again with this bitter flavor. Right, okay. Gin. Hmm. Okay. Okay. See, orange twist while getting twisted. I reckon, Shala, I'm going to add the ice back to it, right? Is that okay? I mean, it says strain it, but I don't reckon that's right. Is that right? I kind of want the ice back in there. Go back in there. Get him back in there. Dude, there's ice that's stuck in there. Gotta love a good orange twist. Cheers to a hanky panky. Hank the pank. Ah, oh, don't go. I'm bird friendly. Get back over here. That made me come over there. I'd add ice. Damn straight, Shyla. You're damn straight. I'd add ice to that mix as well. We don't, not even sorted with our own amount of ice. Let's add some more to the shiz. Also, it gives me a chance to wash my hands because the orange made them a little stinky. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That looks rad now, Shyla. Look at this. That looks rad like that. Full of ice and the orange twist. The color of that looks, that looks freaking awesome. I gotta tell you though, I don't know, it's not, it's a little bitter. However, that is much, much, much nicer. There's a bunch of dudes down there in their wetsuits that are either going out or they come back in. I didn't. Did, did you guys see a boat come in? Did they? Did they come in or like half half in their wetsuits? They've either gone out or they're going out. It's nice and refreshing. It is better like this. It's also rad that I got to use the um, the, the cocktail shaker as well. Even though I didn't shake it till you make it. But here we have the Lemon Tree Passage Distilling Gin, folks. Just, uh, just a reminder. There it is. Lemon Tree Passage Distilling. The gin. You can go to their distillery and you can get a beverage made by the lovely Susan Loy and you will have better. Like, this is just me 
freestyling it, right? But you'll get it made by Char uh, Charlotte. You'll get it made by Susan Loy, and it'll be way better. I don't even know. Maybe Greeny's a barkeep there as well. I don't know. Maybe he, maybe he makes the drinks as well. Either way, you'd get a better option. I've got so much sticky orange juice everywhere here. Let me just put some water on here. Clean the juice off the table. Yeah, my skills is with beverage making. Eh. Let's just say it's not up there as a, a bar. You would, if you got this served in a bar, you'd be like, dude, what the hell is this? This is not a Guinness. Go back and pour that properly. And don't bring it to me until the head's settled for at least two minutes. That's what I, that's, that's the only thing I could compare this to. Not that this is tasting like a Guinness, but the idea of serving it like this. A, it's not a martini glass, and B, the lemon, the orange twist leaves a lot to be desired. You know who is good at making drinks? Marty! Marty will be here next weekend. Maybe we should do a maybe we should do an IRL stream down here. Marty and I drinking. Stacy could drive us and then pick us back up. Stacy. That'd be cool. We could sit down here and just booze up. I'll put it to Marty and say, dude, I don't know how I don't know how Stacy will feel about this, but do you want to do an IRL stream? We, hey, by the way, are we level here, folks? Hendrick? Someone go, someone wake Hendrick up. We're not even level. We haven't been level the whole time. You yahoos. Let me know if we're not level. I need the H-man to let me know, huh? Yeah, maybe that could be a thing. Like, uh, Marty and I, because he makes a mean, dark and stormy. Now, that's obviously not gin-related, but we got so many ingredients here. I wonder if I said to him, I got this, 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 and this. What can you, what can you uh, put these together to come up with? He might have a few different recipes. He might have a few different ideas of, of different things he could come up with. I mean, either way, I've got a pretty, pretty good collection of um, mixes going on here. Hey, like now we've got a, you know, we got a little, little, uh, got a little liquor cabinet that I never thought I would have. My liquor cabinet usually just has Jack in it. Now it's got Campari, Franco Branca, Chartreuse, Noeli Pratt, and Creme de la Frambose, and orange bitters. Oh, he's back! Look at this. Actually, no, no one's even there anyway. I was going to show you an Australian bird. Hello, Maggie. Good job. i got nothing for you here, dude. Unless you want to eat a cinnamon stick or some orange peel. He's going to be like, no, that's up. Net TV, what flavor is the Campari? Oh, that's a good question. What is that? What is the flavor of that? Well, it says bitter on the front. On the back, it doesn't actually have much. It just gives you a couple of ingredients for a Negroni, which we've already had. It doesn't actually tell you much about it at all. What flavor, I would say? I'd say this is old cigarette packet flavor. It smells like an, a, de a decaying cigarette packet. Not even cigarette. Rollies. Not that I'm a smoker, but I know the smell. It smells like a packet of tobacco, a pouch of tobacco that's been sitting in a Mazda RX-7 in the little 
pull out section in the front there in the center console. It's been there for about four months, sitting in the sun. On the radio, AM, it's playing Skyhooks. That's what I'm getting from that. Now I might have I might have extended that with a little bit of poetic license because the you know sun and the gin, but that's the vibe I'm getting, the flavor from that. That's what I'm getting from that. I know it's a little far-fetched. What did you expect me to say? It brings out the uh, the tannins of the uh, aromatic herbs from southern Portugal, where they oh yeah, hopefully. Shut up. It's a magpie talking to us. Come on. These guys start singing. It's uh, such a beautiful sound. He's not singing. Yet. Bugger. Bugger! I wanted you guys to hear the magpie talking to us. Hmm. I can play it for you. I um oh man, that's all wet. I um I video I, I, I made an audio recording of the magpies at the front of my place, uh, front of my bedroom actually, uh, one day talking. And where is it? Where is it? Magpies. I did this on the 21st of March 2019. Now, when I play this to magpies that are in the wild, they freak out because it's like, how come that human's making our noises? Check this out. That's a mother and two babies. One baby, one a bit older. Check this out. Can you see that? That's a bit too dark, isn't it? I've got to play it again. He's tripping out. See, magpies, magpies are actually pretty placid. They're like a, they're actually a pretty cool bird. And that one is probably sort of a bit buzzed right now. Like what, what is this noise he's hearing? He can't, he can't, he can't imagine what's happening here. Why, why are there sounds of our bird? Like these are our, these are our sounds. Probably freaking out about that. It's like, what is going on over there? Like that, that's not a, that's not a, that's not someone I recognize. Uh, I looked it up and it's alcohol sugar with infusion flavor from oranges and rhubarb. That old smell must be the rhubarb, right? Uh, rhubarb is old. By the way, anybody that comes past here, because this is, this is not actually a road, but it's like a, 
well it's a road but it's more of a trailer park so there's a there's a boat ramp here and that is the overflow car park area for uh, boats if you've got a boat and you can't park your car you, let's say you're going out for the day maybe you're going to hit the, the barrels right you're going to go out there and, and smash it you park your boat in the water then you've got to put your car somewhere if down there is too full there's an extra overflow area up here that's what this that's what this area is so no one really comes through here but every now and then a car will just come and do a little little wander by and they must see this and go what the hell is going on over there what have they got a bar up there or something Somebody came and had a good time and left their shit here. Actually, I don't want that in frame, but I'll take that back with me. So I put that up to there. I think that's better. Let's get a bit more of an angel there. Bam. Oh shit. Well. How about that folks? How to know this is just a side, a side topic here. How to know when you've got a dead YouTube channel. This is a good way to know, right? You have a channel. It has 20 odd thousand subscribers. You do a live stream and six people watch. Out of 24, 20, 23,000, six people. You would say at that point, dude, you've got a dead channel. Yeah, that's an example of, that's a clear example of a dead YouTube channel in 2021. There's a clear example of that. Why does not, so on DLive, out of my 7,000 followers, 7,300, 7,400, 7,400, Let's say I would I would argue that maybe at least one thousand of that. Let's round it to a pretty straight number. One th but one thousand of that would be trolls, right? Deleted accounts or accounts that were made because of dicks, right? Just just nothing accounts. So at least a thousand, maybe more, more than likely more. There would be another thousand at least that are no longer active channels uh, so, or, or accounts. So like maybe they were legitimate channels and a, a legitimate account that was involved in DLive before, let's just say January this year. Um, so they're gone as well. So then you've got about 2000. If you, have, if you, if you went conservative, let's call that 3000. So of seven, let's let's say instead of seven four, let's just say I got seven thousand followers. Take off three thousand, right? You've, then you've got four thousand. So we're looking at four thousand people that actually get a notification on their phone that I've gone live on D Live. Now of that four thousand, ten percent would be forty, right? That would be a rough estimate. 10% of 4,000, well that's not a rough estimate, that's mathematics, 40%, uh, sorry, 4, 4%, 10% 10% uh, will be 40 people. What a surprise, I average around 30 to 40 to 50 viewers on a stream, 20 to 30 to 40, maybe not 50, 20, 30, 40, let's just call it around the even 30 to 40 area, which is about 10% of my actual follow account. So, what I'm getting at, in a long, a long-winded way, 
is that if all of my subscribers on YouTube got the notification that I went live and 10% of them came into my stream, it would be a lot more than five, right? So it's, that's not happening. That's obviously not happening. Not everybody is getting the notification. Now, why might that be? Well, that's because YouTube decided in their infinite wisdom to have a multi-tiered subscription concept where not only do you have to say, I wanna to subscribe to this channel, but I also wanna get notified when they go live or when they upload. I wanna see how many, I wanna see some of their notifications or all of them. It's just too much, right? You either, you either like a channel and therefore you wanna see everything they do it's like, it's like saying, I love the Foo Fighters, but every second album they put out, I don't want to know about. I only want to know about every third album. That's the mentality there. Like, you want to, you want to follow your favorite artist, but you don't want to see everything they do. Why not? Why would, why would YouTube think that's a good thing? How much do you want to see from that person? Everything? Like, check this box. It just becomes too tiresome. Too many things too many things for someone to do just to support their favorite content creator. Now, I'm not saying I'm, I'm anybody's favorite content creator, but when you look at the numbers, 23,000 subs and five people watching a stream doesn't make any sense at all. Doesn't make any sense. Uh, there's gonna be no D-Live stream tonight, NetTV. Uh, no D-Live stream tonight. Charlie, hey Charlie, hey Charlie, comes across from DLive, Charlie Brown. How you doing man? Thank you dude, thanks for coming over to, to the YouTube machine. I was just, I was just slamming YouTube. More, more, more so than slamming YouTube, just slamming the fact, right? This is the fact. And you know me, the more and more we move into alternative platforms, Gaze TV for one, Gaze TV as an upload site, to me far outranks YouTube far outranks YouTube. Odyssey's up there as well. Cos TV, Cos.TV is a little clunky. It's a little, Cos.TV kind of reminds me of the old Steam It days where everybody's just going, oh, great content, man. Please upvote, like for like, sub for sub, all that kind of YouTube-esque crap. But Cos. Uh, Gaze TV isn't like that yet. There's a big fly on my lens. Can you guys see that? It's right on the corner. Last time we had a spider on uh, one o'clock, now we've got a, a fly at 11 o'clock. If they were together, there'd be a fist fight going on right now. Red vest and me. That's, there's red vest and there's me. It's gonna be a punch up, watch out. Oh, he's going, oh, he's back, he's off, he's off. Oh, that's right, last time it was backwards for you. So that's that's actually, that's two, two, two o'clock for you guys. Oh, he's gone, he's gone, he's out of there. And I don't wanna wax too poetical about YouTube and that, but Today, of all days, like, this this content would go well on DLive, right? But it's now going to six people on YouTube. You know, it's a bit it's a bit of a shame, but I'm gonna persist with it. I'm gonna go for it for 10 years. I said I'd do 10 years on YouTube. When I get, when I turn 50, I'm probably gonna pull the pin on my YouTube and go, I'm going elsewhere, folks. The YouTube will exist, but I'm not focusing on it. I'm gonna go to here, here, and here. That's what I said, I said 10 years. I'm gonna go hardcore on other platforms, I think. Anyway, that's about four years away from now, but. It's, it's a, I'll just drop that down a, a notch. It's an interesting conundrum we find ourselves in, really, because like, go, like I said earlier, go back 10 years, go back 15 years, and the, even the concept of uploading videos to the internet was <coughs> so foreign and so strange. Now it seems like you, the creator has a multitude of options to decide where they're gonna put their content. And the one that they're gonna go with is the one that's gonna give them the most reach and the most return. A hundred percent, that's not YouTube. That is not YouTube at all. YouTube suppress everything, everything. Whatever, whatever you wanna talk about, they'll suppress. Unless you're Jake Paul, unless you're one of their beloved uh, big name celebrities that brings in all the views, you're, you're suppressed. Doesn't matter what you do. Well, you know what I say about that. It does matter, it does matter the concept, right? The concept. Yeah, and Tooth Boy is what I'm looking at at that point, Gold, uh, Ghost Town Living. That concept is so unique and so bewildering that it, it surpasses all YouTube 
algorithms. It doesn't. You don't need thumbnails. You don't need, you know, networks of channels. You don't need content related to the next video. You don't. You you get a concept like Ghost Town Living. You don't need to do anything. All you gotta do is put up put up videos, and you're gonna win. Like doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You could do a thumbnail that was completely black. You could you could put a description and a title that's totally irrelevant. You could clickbait the crap out of it. Wouldn't matter. You'd, you're putting up something so unique and so intriguing that people will watch it. Doesn't matter anything else. That's why he's about to hit a million subs. When we started watching that channel, under eight, under a hundred thousand. I think he had eighty-seven thousand. Within what? Eight months, six months. He's he's got to a um, well, probably right now. If I don't even know, you probably go and check. He's probably hit a million by now, right? Because the content, the content is king. The content makes the channel. And if you spend all your time, and I do this, I'm totally to blame. You spend all your time dissecting why and wondering if and wondering. This is what CreatorCast was, right? CreatorCast spent all their time trying to trip the algorithm, wonder why, uh, find out if, uh, can we do that, can we test that, can we test this, do live streams hurt your channel, does having a, uh, a, a community post affect you, should you do a poll, should you put a little up in the top right hand corner, should you add people, should you do an end card, all that stuff, all of it, everything that YouTube give you is totally to distract you from making the content. They want, they want you to get tangled up in this so that you spend all your time wondering and therefore you keep engaging. Then they keep getting the ad revenue. But if you get, if you get like, like Tooth Boy, you get a channel where you go like, oh, I bought a ghost town. I'm gonna make videos. Doesn't matter what he does. Thumbnails can be absolutely shit, can clickbait the crap out of us, can lie straight to our faces. I'm alone in my ghost town. Who's that guy? Oh, no, don't worry about that. I thought you said you're alone. No, that guy's not part of it. Either you're alone or you're not. It literally has it. Alone in my ghost town. There's a guy. You're not alone. So you can lie straight to your audience and it doesn't matter. The channel will skyrocket because content. Living in a ghost town. Buying a ghost town and renovating it. Dude, that is, com that is completely... All he has to do is put the words three and the letters AM in his, in his title of his stream and he will be a million views every single video. Uh, Discovering the 800 level at 3 a.m. You'll never guess what happened next. Bam. Done. And I've seen it. We've seen it. We've enjoyed it. We've loved it. And what I'm getting at ultimately is that there seems to me like the very notion of what YouTube was and the, the, the perceived importance of how it was to be on YouTube, it's, it's becoming less and less relevant. There are so many other ways to uh, broadcast yourself and so many different ways to financially benefit from that in crypto cryptocurrency uh, that YouTube is it's losing, it's falling away. It's falling by the wayside because they're stuck in that old school manner of thinking. And, 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 and when you have someone like Mr. Beast who uh, has such a, a strange... Like his, his approach is so strange, right? It's so strange. Like no one, no one would have the balls to do what he's done, to give away literally everything. Like he's just given away everything until the point of him giving away becomes the thing. And then people look at him and go, wait a second, dude, so you're, so you're monetizing the notion of giving away money. Well, well, props to you, Mr. Beast, right? You've, you've, you've nailed it. You've gone, anybody that's striving to like do challenges and p pranks and like 24 hours alone on the sea in a dinghy and all that crap, you're missing the point, hey. Whatever money you have, give it to a homeless dude and monetize that. Monetize yourself giving away your own money. Bam. A new, a new, uh, a new uh, king has been born, and YouTube is kind of like stuck on that sort of that treadmill of like there's so many like e even the notion of being a YouTuber, right? That that concept is still a thing. Like I want to be a YouTuber when I grow up. Well, what's the content? I, I, I don't know. I Minecraft. 
that's how you're gonna do it? I mean, that's done and dusted. So I say, I say take the chances elsewhere, um, embrace the new tech, which is cryptocurrency, embrace the concept of that and, and welcome it and divvy up your time. I'm certainly divvying up. I'm divvying up my time. Right now I'm giving it all to YouTube, but I'm divvying it up. I'm, I'm putting a lot of attention on DLive. You guys have, I've talked about it plenty of times. I'm doing a lot on gaze.tv. I'm putting a lot of my attention there. This is, a, this is a new site. It's only, it's private access right now. What is it now? The, the third week in May, it opens up to the public. Third week in May, that's public access on gaze.tv. Get over there immediately. I told you, I told you, every second of your upload is worth one gaze token. Every second. So you upload a 10 minute video, you get a maximum amount of gaze token. What's gaze worth? Jack shit. In 2021, go forward to 2024, what's a gaze token worth? Imagine that was worth a dollar and you had been uploading content. Well, let me tell you about this. That process of one gaze token per second, that's changed. It's now dropped back to 0 0.1 because they've already extended that, the, the bounty has been given out and that, I think there's about 5 million gaze tokens that went out in that first three weeks of private access. So now you upload and every second is worth 0.1 gaze, whereas it used to be every second was worth one gaze. So what I'm saying is, when something like this happens, do yourself a solid and get on it. James in Germany got on it, uploaded a whole bunch of his friends' videos, cashed in, took the gaze and ran, right? I'm there for the, for the actual content, like to upload. And, and I'll tell you what, the moment gaze.tv open up live streaming, I'll be doing exclusive streams on gaze. It's not going to be like I'm doing D Live only. I'm going to do. I'm going to go and do live streams on Gaze as well. Maybe my streams on YouTube will be my streams on Gaze. Blah 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 blah. We're here for gin. How do we get onto that rant? What, who? So Net TV sparked me off. So will you be going home before the D Live stream or staying there? That's where that came from. I started talking about D Live. I do love D Live. I'd rather be there right now, actually. Wow, that went on a bit of a rant, didn't it? Shit! Susan Wajiki, you gotta catch up. YouTube, you're falling by the wayside. Totally falling by the wayside. The tubes of you. Funnily enough, I just broadcast this on YouTube. That whole rant was on YouTube. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I note the irony. Oh, good gives. No worries, Net TV. You know, it's something that's important to me. Like it, it, it's something that I know not everybody wants to hear it. And you didn't, you didn't come here. And arguably, if you're watching this stream now for the Lemon Tree Passage Distilling Gin, you'd be like, "What's this guy rambling about? Like, what's why is he going off on that tangent?" I get that, I get that, and I apologize. It's unfortunate, you know what, you know what? It's unfortunate that this even has to be a conversation because all this does is take away from the creation. This takes away from the creativity, this takes away from the ingenuity, this takes away from the individuality. All this stuff, all this YouTube stuff where they even have tutorials where they tell you, you gotta, you gotta tell, I've not said it once in this stream, but don't forget to like, share and subscribe, right? If you like this content, if you like what I'm doing, please share this out with all your friends. They tell you to do that. Now, if they never, if they never, if they never instructed YouTubers to do that, I would never do it. I, I think in, in my mind, I give my, my viewers the credit that they're smart enough to work that shit out. If you like this content and you've got a friend who likes gin, right? You got a friend who likes gin. Maybe they live up in the Newcastle region and that's not far from there, Lemon Tree Passage. Well, you're not a dickhead, right? You're not stupid. You can say, "Well, I'll sh I'll share this video with my friend because he lives up there." I don't I don't feel like I need to tell you that. But YouTube make a point of instructing their creators to always tell their viewers to like, share and subscribe, 
hit that little bell notification to make sure you get alerted for every time I upload. Look at the pelicans. Watch the pelicans. They might have gone slightly out of frame. So therefore, what, what YouTube has just done is they've almost given a blueprint to how every YouTube video should look. How many videos do you watch on YouTube where the person says these words? They say this, they say the same thing, they go. Hi guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today on the stream we're going to be talking about lemon tree passage at Silling. So if you think this is interesting content that you want to see more of, please hit the share button and don't forget to like uh, the, the content and subscribe. That'll really help me out. So without any further ado, let's get right into the content. And then they don't get into the content. They take another pause. They start talking about the sponsor for this show is uh, Cinnamon Sticks. If you ever need a cinnamon stick, these ones are the best because they're the best because I think they're the best and they're the best and they're for the cinnamon sticks. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. So without any further further ado, let's get right into the content. Bam! And then it cuts to this, bam! And all of that stuff takes away from the creativity. Every single time you see that, it's the same person imitating the person before. No one is being creative. No one is being ingenuitive. No one's thinking outside the square. They're all doing exactly what YouTube have said that they should, they should do to make sure that their audience stays you got to you got to make sure you drill your audience in the first 9 seconds otherwise they're going to cut off if you don't get if you don't capture them in the first 9 seconds they're gone well then everybody goes what's up guys welcome back to the channel so good to see you how are you? oh we're going to talk about lemon tree and then it's and then within 9 seconds you're like dude this guy's a moron if anybody had any smarts about themselves they'd be like fuck this i'm done but that's the way that they're telling everybody to act and that takes away from ingenuity takes away from individuality, takes away from creativity, it's boring. It's totally boring. That's why I struggled. When I when I made a point about it, like back about a year ago, I was talking about how I'm gonna I'm gonna do the YouTube thing, I'm gonna play the game. It really sucked. It really sucked to do that. It was like soul crunching for me to do that. I didn't wanna I didn't wanna be that guy. I didn't want to tell you to like, share and subscribe. I don't want to point up here and don't forget to share the video out with all your friends and hit this. I don't want to do that. You're, you're smart enough to work that shit out yourselves. But if you want to succeed on YouTube, you got to be a YouTuber. It's terrible. It's a terrible state of affairs. Imagine, imagine telling an audience, imagine, imagine going to a play, go to a play, right? A, a stage production and the lead actor comes out and he's in character. Let's say he's a, the character is, um, what's the character? What do we got here? Okay. The character is knife boy mixer. I'm a character, right? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a character in a play. My character is based upon a, upon a knife and a mixer. And this is the story of how the knife and the mixer intertwine, uh, metaphorically speaking, to become one and they become knife mix. So he comes out. Mind you, he's in character. He comes out. My name's Knife, my name's Mixer. We never intertwine. This is the story of how we all intertwine eventually later on. By the way, if you like this play, don't forget to like it and share it with all your friends because, I mean, this is going to help the algorithm and like, I've got, I've got... This is the story of how Knife becomes Mixer and intertwines together and everybody has a great time. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Could you imagine? Like, that's the equivalent, right? You got like, you got someone delivering content and they got to pause the content to tell you what to do on the platform. You know what to do. You know if you like it, you'll like it. If your friend wants to see it, you'll share it. You're not an idiot. Yet YouTube make everybody believe everybody's an idiot. And it sucks. It's the dumbing down of creativity. End rant. I don't hit like until I watch and really like it. Exactly, Charles. That's what that button's for, right? That type of video sucks. Net TV, that's all the videos on YouTube. That's literally every video on YouTube. The dude's coming in going, before we begin, uh, 
got a great video coming up. I've got uh, this lemon tree passage distilling vodka, uh, gin. It's really good. Before we get there though, just don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Um, this will really help the algorithm. I'm getting suppressed a lot lately, so if you can do whatever you can to help me, that'd be great. Just, by the way, the viewer doesn't give a fuck about your algorithm. They don't give a shit about that. They're only here to watch the content. They don't care about you and your, your numbers and your sub count. They don't care at all. Give them the content. Just like I don't care, when I turn on HBO to watch Curb Your Enthusiasm, I don't care how HBO is going in terms of the ranking of television networks or studio productions in the scale of them. I don't give a fuck about that. I just want to watch Curb Your Enthusiasm. You shouldn't care about the channel that you're watching the content on. Just watch the content. The content is what you're there for. But YouTube have devised this finicky mechanism to distract everybody that this is what you need to worry about. This is the thing that you need to involve yourself in. You have to involve yourself in statistics and click-through ratios and thumbnail views and how many views that translates to how many subs. Nobody gives a shit about that. Just make the content. It's like a band, right? You go and see a band at a festival. You hear them play, they play their, they play their album. They're, let's say that they're touring on their new record and they play the album. You're looking at the live show going, dude, this is rad, right? I never thought he would do that song. That is amazing. You're not thinking about the production on the record. You're not thinking about the record label and the distribution and how all that comes together. You don't give a fuck about that. You're there to see the live band. You're here to watch a performance, a delivery, a, a, a media, video and audio. You're here to watch that. You shouldn't, you shouldn't concern yourselves with the mechanisms behind the scenes, with the channel's growth and the channel statistics. And every YouTuber that does that, myself included, talks about sub numbers and counts and all that. It's distracting you from the content. And if the content's good, you won't even need to know about it, such as Ghost Town Living. Wow. What a rant, folks. Let's continue on with the gin, because this is only going to get worse from here, I tell you now. Don't forget to like, share, and fucking subscribe! <laughs> Whoopsie. Getting a little aggressive here. Let's get the uh, orange peel out. All right, next up. Next up, next song. In the chat, the, oh, not in the chat, the screenshot. So that was Charlotte Rose's Hanky Panky. Ooh, what do we got here? Ooh, another one from Charlotte Rose. Hello, Charlotte, you little beauty with two recommendations. This is called a Floradora cocktail. Before we get into the Floradora cocktail, don't forget, if you like this content, please hit the share button. Share this with all your friends. You might have friends that like Floradora cocktails. Maybe they're in Florida and they like this. Don't forget to share this out with them. Also hit that like button. Uh, don't forget to tap the bell as well because the, the bell is like the thing you gotta do. And, and subscribe to the channel because if you subscribe, the algorithm trips itself up and then all of a sudden, you know, I get, I get a bigger sub count, which means absolutely nothing to you, but it helps me. So don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and do all that shizzle. <laughs> we'll be right back. Um, now, back to regular broadcasting. This is a Floradora cocktail, a classic straight from Broadway. Ingredients, one and a half ounces of gin, lemon tree passage distilling, half an ounce of lime juice. Yee! The first time we're gonna open this today, lime juice. Half an ounce of creme de framboise. This one here, this took a month to get to me. I literally ordered this, what are we now? The, what are we, the 9th of May. I ordered this the beginning of April and it just got here two days ago. It's taken a long time. So we only need a small amount of that. Uh, four ounces of ginger ale. First time we hit the ginger ale today. Oh, here it is. Shrips. Ginger ale. Method, pour the gin, lime juice, and framboise into a highball glass filled with ice. Top it with ginger ale. Oh, we're gonna drink from a highball. Hell yeah. Love a highball glass. Okay, let's do this. Charlotte Rose, a Flor Floradora cocktail. 
one and a half ounces of gin. So, we go back to this side. Actually, I've got to clean this out. It's a little sticky. A little stinky. Got a lot of water in the bottom there. So that's clean. So, we go with... The gin here is Lemon Tree Passage Distilling. This is their gin from Lemon Tree Passage Distilling. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to their Facebook page. <laughs> We're taking one and a half ounces, which is one and a half shots of gin. So this is a 30 mil shot. We're gonna go 30 and we're gonna do a half. So we'll do one of one of either side here. Highball glass, yep. Giggity giggity. There's one ounce. Turn this shizzle over, we go with another halfer. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, a half an ounce of lime juice. Oh, this is cool, man. Lime juice. Let me let me put this front and Oh, we wah wah. Let me put this front and center here. I want I want the uh, lemon tree passage up there in the front. Shit. Okay, let's go with a half an ounce of lime juice. Fresh? Well, I mean, arguably, this isn't the freshest lime juice. Well, it's it's fresh in the sense that I just opened it, but it's not fresh from a lime. Like a lemon to a lime, a lime to a lemon. Half an ounce, so the upside down style. Comes out in droplets. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you if you appreciate droplets. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you like cocktails, do me a favor and share this out with all your cocktail fucking friends. Half an ounce of creme de framboise liqueur. This is the first time we're opening this up, folks. It's called Merlet. It took me a month to get. It's all in French. Wait a second, there is an English version. Located in the Santanage land, the French area of the Ch Charites, the Merlet family selected its raspberries. What? Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. With contracted producers, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. To create this liqueur, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. This is how boring this shit is, right? You gotta talk about it. Like, like share, and subscribe. It is crafted through an artisanal method of fruits in... Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe! These crows. It is crafted through an artisanal method of fruits infused in neutral spirit. Neutral spirit. This is not YouTube, right? This is not a neutral spirit. In order to genuinely deliver their aromas. To be served on the rocks with soda water or in the French tradition with white wine or champagne. Far out. You mix it with champagne? It's 18% by volume. I've never had it. I've never known of it. I've never seen it. I don't know anything about this, but here we go. I know it took me an awful long time to obtain this. And it was 80 bucks, so it's not cheap. Oh, by the way, I bought the, um, I bought the uh, Coin Captain's rum recommendation, aviation rum. I bought that yesterday. That should be coming soon. Oh, it's got a cork. Anything with a cork is usually pretty damn good. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Oh my goodness! Raspberries, what? Oh, this smells tits. How much do we need? Only a half ounce? Ah. I thought this would go with a lot more. Only a half ounce. Oh, dude, that looks rad. Dude. This Charlotte Rose. Yeah. yeah. Um, four ounces of ginger ale. So four on this side of the ginger ale. That looks rad. That smells so cool, too. Here we go, folks. Ginger ale. Schweppes, shrimp of essence. Four, so four shots of this. So this is a uh, soda pop. One. Two. Oh, three. 
Oh, I reckon we got a winner here. I can already feel this one, Charla. That's four shots there. Garnish with a lime wedge? I didn't bring a lime. No, I didn't get a lime. Shit. No lime wedge for a garnish. Um, so the method is pour the gin, the lime juice, the framboy into a harbour glass filled with ice topped with ginger ale. Okay, that's what I've done. I didn't add the ice though, I'll add ice now. Shell Rose! This is tits! This is a great one. Oh, what is it called again? I think we got a winner here. What is this called? This is called a Florida Floridora cocktail. I don't have a lime wedge, unfortunately, but um, you know, well, we can't all have everything. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Back to the YouTube chit chat. Don't put orange in it, just skip the lime or use lemon. I don't have a lemon either. I only brought an orange. None of the recipes called for it, except now that I'm seeing it there. This one sounds the best so far, fingers crossed. Dude, this, Charla Rose, this one, just judging on this framboy, creme de framboy, this thing smells absolutely, that smells so insanely cool. It smells like a pavlova. Let's enjoy a pavlova in a glass. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, you motherfuckers. Holy! What? What have we got here? Dude, this ta- Hello? This tastes like a... It tastes like a vodka cruiser. Those Australians in the chat, you all know what I'm talking about, a vodka cruiser. It tastes like a raspberry cruiser. We have a winner. I know I like this stuff, eh? It's a bit more flavorsome. Wow. That's, that's rad. Like, share, and subscribe. I wouldn't put orange in raspberry. Right, Net TV. That's a that's a misnema. A mis a misnema. Don't add raspberry to. Don't put orange in raspberry. I mean, did it say orange? I don't. I don't. I didn't mess that up, did I? It said lime juice. So, Shala, let me ask you this. It doesn't mention orange juice. Let me ask you this. Um, when, where did you first get this? Like, where, where's this from? Like, how do, how do you know this beverage? Like, share, and subscribe. How do you know this beverage? Like, share, and subscribe. Uh, where did it come from? Like, have you had this before? Because that is that is really, really tasty. I'm, um, I'm loving that. I'm loving that. If you love this, uh, like, share, and subscribe. I'm going to stop that. I'm going to stop that crap. That is really tasty though. Where's my YouTube app? This is, this is so strange. This is like a, it's got like a, no, it's not even like raspberry. It's more like, um, it's like sarsaparilla or something. What's that? What's, what's the, um, what's that beverage? The, remember, do you remember, do you Aussies, uh, maybe even Kiwis, uh, do you guys remember Jolt Cola? J-O-L-T, Jolt. That's kind of what I'm getting here. I'm getting a little of that Jolt Cola flavor. Jolt. How many al alcohols has the raspberry bottle got in it? Let me tell you, man. It's only 18%. So far, the big banger has been the chartreuse at 55%. That's fucking lethal, right? Holy balls. 
you smell that again? That's that's like this this the chartreuse smells like. And I don't know if Hendrix here or not, but the chartreuse smells like uh, Unterberg. It smells like a sweet Unterberg, which is the German uh, schnapps uh, herbal. Comes in a small little bottle. Under it's called Under the Mountain. Under, under Mountain uh, Unterberg. That's what that smells like. But it, it, I, actually, that smells pretty good. But I. I don't know if it's going so well in the mixes, but this guy alone, dude, that is so, so sweet. It's like a pavlova. So yeah, Charlotte, where, where have you had that before, Charlotte? What's, what's the connection for you? Yummy, yeah. I had it on a thermon, I had it at a therm, a thermo mix party. Anyone keeping count of every time he says like, share and subscribe? Charlie Brown, that's gonna be, that, that's like my, um, that's like my, um, uh, Jamie O'Brien, um, uh, what's it called? Psyching, the psych meter, we're fully psyched. Like, share, and, that's not as cool as that though. <laughs> don't forget to like, share, and some psych. No, don't do that. Sarsaparilla. Yeah, a bit like sarsaparilla. Sarsaparilla, that's a, that's a pretty a pretty fair comparison here. Hey? Sarsaparilla. I'm going to change the exposure there because we're uh, losing light here. Wow. I'll tell you the I'll tell you the truth. Only if you like, share and subscribe. Now I'll tell you the truth. The first the first three drinks we had, nah, not for me. This one here, definitely the one before it. So so basically the two ones that Charlotte suggested. What I'm saying is Charlotte, if you and I were sitting here together, we'd go we'd go neck and neck for each of those, because I could I wouldn't go back to those first three, the Chad Armstrong ones. I wouldn't go back to that, but I'd definitely go more of what you've suggested. It's a little sweet, like, then again, how much sweeter is that than like, like cock and, and whiskey? I don't, I don't know, but that, it's kind of like we've gone from like, I don't know if the lime juice makes a huge change, but we went from like, sort of really like botanical, like Switzerland garden with the bugs and stuff. And then we went to like this really sweet flavorsome town, Charlottetown. I'd probably rather be in Charlottetown than, than Switzerland at the moment. Cause the, I don't know, like the, this, the Campari and the Chartreuse, it kind of, it, and definitely the Noily Pratt, this definitely gave me this kind of like, uh, it's like a bit more of a, Cool crap. Oh, we lost internet. What happened then? Hold on a second. That's weird. I, I don't know what happened then, folks. I just lost internet. Um, there you go. So we're back. Yeah, one sec. Yeah, I, I saw it. I saw. I saw we went to a four. That's weird. I don't know. Like, did we? Did we lose one of the modems? Let me just check. I'm just checking each of my modems here, folks. I don't have. I don't have Starlink yet. So we're just checking the 4G modems here. That one's still on. That's weird. I don't know. I. I'm still at seven meg. I don't. I don't know. That was weird. That was weird. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah. But that's good to know that it, you know, like that's kind of like when we're driving. I don't know why that would happen just at that particular juncture, but it did. 
Gibbs likes sweeter drinks by the look of it. Yeah, totally, yeah. Yeah, weird. I don't know. I don't know why that happened. Uh, what I was saying is, um, oh man, I was on a rant then. What was it? I genuinely can't remember what I was saying. Probably that's a good thing, right? They moved the cell tower. The cell tower moved. Shit. Just when you think you got this down, they moved the freaking cell tower. I think me and Ben have a very similar taste in the booze. <coughs> That's what I was saying. <laughs> That's what I was saying. Chuli gong. Ah, <laughs> 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 sorry about that, folks. That's something in my throat. Had something really in my throat. Wow, oh, it was really hurting me. Oh, it was like a big stick. It came right out. I don't know how that got in there. Massive stick in my throat. Get out of here. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's 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 the situation. I I, I really enjoy um, you know like Jack and Coke. I, I feel like yeah, the botanical stuff, right? The botanical. That's what gin is. But gin gin is like junipers and cinnamon sticks and. It's all cool. It's not something that I really, you know, I'd, I'd rather like molassesy. I'd rather aged in a red wine barrel for 12 years, whiskey, that kind of thing. No shade to gin at all. And if you want to get gin, I'd highly suggest you yahoos check out Lemon Tree Passage Distilling. I'm not affiliated. This is just an old friend of mine. It's nice. If you like gin, shit yeah. It's a little expensive, I'm not gonna lie. A little expensive. You probably can't get it internationally. But if you're in Australia, shit yeah, go for it. It's good. It's strange. You wanna know how strange? Flavoursome strange. This this tells me when these Yahoos start making whiskies and rums, oh shit yeah. I'm dead keen for that. I gotta get up there. We got one more review to do from their whisk uh, from their range. They got a rose hip gin. So we'll do we'll do that as well. And then I'm gonna take a, a road trip up there and visit Greeny and talk about distilling and talk about rum and talk about whiskey. Someone go and Heinlich maneuver him. Man, that's funny. I saw that exactly that exact thing on the on Curb Your Enthusiasm this morning. I like Charlie. Mrs. Charlie, how you doing Mrs. Charlie 64? So I guess I need to like and subscribe, I'm not gonna share him. <laughs> Mrs. Charlie, I appreciate that. Like, share and subscribe. Don't no, 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 look, I'm being stupid. Don't 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 like this, don't share this shit, don't subscribe. Just enjoy yourselves here in the chat. Like <laughs> that's pretty funny. I appreciate that humor. Are you, are you Charlie's uh, better half, by any chance? I don't want to assume anything, but are you the other side of Charlie64? If you are, you're welcome in the stream anytime. Of course you are. Of course you're welcome. Meanwhile, the barrels continue. It's actually looking a little bit sloppier now. I haven't taken one slash yet. How about that? How about that? Yes, I am. Oh, okay, cool. We got a partnership in the chat here. Mr. and Mrs. Charlie 64. So, let me ask you this, Mrs. Charlie. Um, I want to do this. I want to ease into this. I don't want to I don't want to jump straight in. But there's no way of doing it other than jumping straight in. Are you, are you a content creator or are you a viewer? That's probably the, f the first question. Are you, a, are you a content, do you do anything, like do you create content or do you just consume? Now look, before you answer, nothing wrong with either answer at that point, right? I'm just trying to sort of, because that's going to affect my next question, I suppose. Are you a content creator or a content consumer? 
That's the question. And again, nothing wrong with, with whatever the answer you choose. Nothing, there's, no, there's no shade on either side there. Uh, don't peeski into the parcel tonight. I'm watching. I won't touch the parcel. It's back home, Charlotte. It's back home. I should have brought it here. I want to open it on a D Live. I'll open it tomorrow on the D Live. I gotta pee pretty damn soon though. Now that I've spoken about it, I've kind of triggered it. Uh, Mrs. Charlie says, you give to create and I give to you by listening. Okay, okay. So that, I'd understand that to, to, I'd understand that response as you're a viewer. Uh, you, you don't create content, but you consume content. Okay, that's cool. That's completely fine. I guess my next question, given that information, would be your partner, so Charlie, he watches my content and, and this is a bit self-gratifying and I apologize for doing it, but he watches my content on DLive and then he's come across to, to YouTube today for this stream. Did he bring you over to YouTube reluctantly or are you already uh, are you already watching content on YouTube, and this is nothing weird for you to watch this stream, or 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 just trying to work this out? Are you when your partner says, "Hey, I watch this dude on D Live," you watch a bit on D Live as well, and then you go across and check out more channels on D Live, and you stay within D Live. To get out of D Live into YouTube is a bit of a step. Now I'm I'm I guess I'm taking some liberties here to sort of jump these steps in my head i could i could have got it wrong like this could be completely wrong like you you might be no i watch heaps of channels on youtube it's no no big deal what i'm trying to ascertain is is it a big step to go from the gives a minute d live stream because i've got a link in my chat well i had it there it's probably moved on now but i had a link pointing to this channel and i, I turned off my reruns on d live and i said i'm a, i'm live on youtube exclusively today and here's the link so to get my I guess what I'm roundabout boozy trying to get to is that I'm wondering is it wrong do you feel it's wrong for me to want you to come over to my YouTube channel and to have got here from DLive I guess that's what I'm saying that's yeah because like on one hand it seems like it's okay to take a channel like a big like you take a big creator on YouTube and if they say hey like, like, like take Joe Rogan for example Joe Rogan right so he's like oh hey I, I, I got a deal with Spotify and so from from the 12th of June I can't remember the date whenever it was I'm gonna be only doing this on Spotify so he's basically said to his entire audience if you wanna if you wanna keep enjoying what you've enjoyed from the beginning you got to follow me over here. Now, I'm not I'm not suggesting I'm anywhere near Joe Rogan at all. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that you're the partner of someone who does watch me on DLive and yet here you are on YouTube. So was was it your partner saying come over to the YouTube channel today because he's not on DLive, he's only going to be on YouTube. And how does that make you feel? I guess that's what I'm saying. And I'm doing it I'm I'm I know I'm kind of a little drunk and I'm boozing and it's making it harder to sort of like add the th two and two becomes 12 at that point right i get that i get that i i am i am thankful for you being here but i'm just curious as to how it happened and 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 how that makes you feel let's all get a caravan of love together now while you're thinking of a response to that absolute fucking meandering diatribe i'm taking a slash
first slash. First slash of the day. That's a miracle. Uh, Ch Mrs. Charlie says, I listened with him on DLive, but I listened to you. Sorry, I listened to him on. <laughs> just, just one second, hang. One, one second. <coughs> Do you know what? I reckon Greeny and Susan put alcohol on this gin. I reckon. I... Yeah, I can see it. I can see 40 alcohols swimming around in there. There's alcohol in this gin, isn't there? Yeah, there's alcohol. I can see it. I can see it. Those little sneaky tricksters. They put alcohol in there. Those little tricksters. Um, in the chat, Mrs. Charlie says, I listen with him on DLive, but I listen to Marf on YouTube. Ah, oh, Mafugal News. If I like somebody's content and they go to another channel I have, then I would go, I listen to his on YouTube. Okay. Okay, I get that. I get that. That's... That's cool too. That's your your platform agnostic at that point. That's rad. She's typing Charlie Brown. So you're different. No need to def. What have we got here? A uh, uh, family affair. A mother of uh, a uh, mother. A uh, relationship. She, wait for it. Wait for it. She's talking, man. Just just, just calm down. I get you. I get you. I'm thinking if you were on D Live, your people would have given you a lemon for your drink, and I could hear. Well, yeah, and, and look, look, I, I know, like, just, like, look, literally, literally speaking about that, and, and it's not, like, it's not a topic that a lot of creators want to ever touch on. I don't, I don't feel like, hold on one second. So, I get a lot of love and a lot of support from from the givers. And when I say the givers, I don't necessarily mean the YouTube givers or the Patreon givers or the DLive givers or the Facebook givers. I don't I don't I don't mean anything. I just mean the people that enjoy my content. I get a lot of and when I hit that, I'm talking love. I get a lot of love, a lot of financial support. Now, that said, on YouTube, the ability, like the, the concept or the facility of that support is far reduced because YouTube refused to have any kind of in-app donation system, right? Aside from Super Chat and aside from memberships and aside from merchandise, they don't actually have uh, my Eunice. Wow! They don't have like a. Like you can't watch a YouTube stream and say, "I've only got a hundred YTT YouTube tokens. I've only got a hundred, so I'm going to give twenty to this guy, and I'm going to give sixty to that guy, and then I'm going to give twenty. You don't. You, that's not even a thing on YouTube, and that's why I think they've missed the game. Right? This has happened for so long, and and it's only. Oh, sorry, I should be clear. Only related to live streams. But this has been happening forever on Twitch. It's been happening for as long as I've been on DLive. And I believe it happened on Mixer before it shut down. The idea of like an in-app donation, right? YouTube just don't... I don't know, I don't know why. I don't know why they, they refuse that. It's like you got the super chat and that's it. So you can do a super chat, but why not like... Why isn't there a currency? Why isn't there a YouTube currency? That's why I say go back and look at my previous stream. Why doesn't, how long until YouTube uh, enable blockchain, uh, they, how long until YouTube come out and go, okay, you can get paid in crypto? From here on in, you can either get AdSense in USD or you can get paid in crypto. And we're on the blockchain, we're on the Ethereum blockchain and we've got a YouTube token. That's coming. That's definitely, definitely coming. Like whether it be this year, next year or the year after, it's 100% coming. The longer it takes, the worse they look, but it's, it's coming, it's coming. And at that point, you'll be able to go, well, hey man, I'll drop you some, some YTT, some YouTube token. It's currently worth 0 0.004 cents. And then in four years, man, because Jake Paul boxed some fucking other YouTuber, it's worth 0 0.02 cents. And then suddenly Logan Paul fought and it's worth a dollar. And that's, that's what I'm saying, right? 
they, they, they're missing it. They're missing, they're missing a huge opportunity. But I think they know. They know and they're just watching it. And they're watching other platforms. And they'll be like, oh yeah, yeah. No, we, we got it. We got, we got this. We got this. We'll get there. Gin is nice, NetTV says, but you can drink a lot of it without getting too heaty the next day if you don't have soda water. I don't have any soda water. You guys have been married since 92. 92, 2002, 20, see, oh, you guys are 19 years? Hell yeah, man, I'll give, I'll give that up, hey. 19 years marriage, that's rad, dude. That's, that's commendable, that's commendable. How do, you, how, how do you do it, how do you do it? Uh, NetTV, I enjoy your content, obviously. It's nice having some Australian friends. NetTV, you might as well be Australian, dude. You're a, you're a Kiwi, you're, you're, you and I, I could throw a stone and I'd have no chance of getting New Zealand, but you're, you're just over there, dude. You're, you and I are super close, man. I live in your country for a year. I loved it. I love New Zealand. Count again? Did I count that wrong? Been married since 92. 92, 2002 is 10 years. 2012 is 20 years. 2022. Ah, oh, yeah, you're right. 29 years. Shit! Now look, at this particular juncture, I don't want to alert you, but I feel like there could be alcohol in this gin. That's what I'm saying. Could be. I don't know for a fact. There could be alcohol in this gin. I'm looking in there. Greeny? Greeny? Did you and Susan put alcohol in here? You crazy kids. Making the alcoholic gin like that. Why would you do that? Just make it alcohol free. Shit! Imagine alcohol free gin. Lousy. James in Germany's in the house. Yo, James, how you doing, man? I didn't even see you come in. Cheers, man. I think there's alcohol in his drink. There is definitely alcohol. Hey, there's a second time round for these, these guys are coming back for a second round. <laughs> these guys are doing a loop in the, in the, in the car park. <laughs> They're gonna do a third loop. If they do a third loop, they should come over and have a gin. If they do a third loop, dude, they're doing a third loop. If they come, they should pull up and have a gin. Uh, what can we, what can we, what would I mix it with, eh? What would I give them? The lousy one or the good one? It's like me kind of like explaining gin. That's not them. There's, another, there's, there's two cars doing circuits here. She's. <laughs> have a drink! Oh, he's teaching how to drive a manual. Teach, he's, he pulled his window down and he said, I'm teaching, you guys can't see this, I'll, I'll um, if they, if they do a fourth run, I'll, they're doing a fourth, I'll, I'll turn it around, I'll turn it around and you guys can see this, because you b might think I'm making it up or whatever, but, um, where are we? So coming up over here, there's a blue car, teaching how to drive a manual, I've done this, in this exact spot. <laughs> yeah. She's onto it. She's driving a manual for the first time. I saw the number plate, Shell. Shelby! She's driving a manual, Shelby. It's taken her 20 odd years and she's driving a manual. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> I was gonna say, look, they're gonna, they're gonna keep, they're doing a fifth, what's that, sixth? Or, that's, their, that's their five, five runs. I was gonna say, come over and have a, have a gin, but she's learning how to drive. That's not, the, that's not the right time to drink a gin, hey. But they would be seeing all this shit. <laughs> They'd be like, what the hell is this dude doing? I think there's alcohol in his drink. James, I, um, I, I believe you, man. I believe we, we, we got a little bit of a bit more of an angel here, haven't we? Hendrik, are we level? Hendrik, Hendrik, Hendrik? If I came down to a spot, like I know the spot here, if I came down here and I saw a dude with a table full of booze, like 
I'd totally come over and go, what's going on here, man? Like, I understand having a beer or two, but you got like, you got a full deck of um, liquor here. What's going on? Like, what are, what are you doing? I'd, I'd be asking questions. That may be the case, but this gentleman is not asking questions. So then let us go back to the screenshots because we do have one last beverage. This is from Music Man. No links, no links, no links. Uh, music Man, Music Man, Music Man. No links, no links. He always puts links in my chat. Even though we don't ask for them, he puts them in. So he's got a beverage here. It's called a Negroni. We've already had this, I feel. He said use Jack instead of gin. And I'm like, dude, you understand, like, no, no shade to Music Man, no shade, right? No shade. But Music Man, you do realize that the whole point of this is that we're looking at gin. So why you would tell me to use Jack instead of gin is confusing. Let's just say that's confusing. A little baffling, right? A little baffling. Like I, I'm literally enjoying my friend's gin and you tell me to use Jack instead. So, so we're not gonna do that, we're gonna use gin. Now that being said, I feel like we've already had a Negroni, but here it is. Um, so, ingredients. Three centiliters of gin. Three centiliters? Fucking, that's, fuck that. We're going a full shot. So each one, each one is three centiliters. So let's just go with a shot. 30, uh, that's probably 30 mil, right? 30 mil, three centiliters, there, you're right. Three centiliters is 30 mils. So let's put it in this guy here. So a shot of gin. Shot of gin. Oh, uh, L plate's coming by again. A shot of gin. There's one shot of gin. Uh, a shot of sweet red vermouth. So we go back to our old favorite not Noily Pratt. I don't like this stuff. And we watched the we watched the um What are we we watched it about a month ago on, on my D live stream. We watched a video with What's the dude who swears a lot? Um the chef, the English chef who swears a lot? What's his name? Fuck. Gordon Ramsay. We watched a Gordon Ramsay video about the Noily Pratt distillery. And I got excited. And now that I'm having Noily Pratt, I think this is, this is not me. This is, one of those. This is expensive to get, to get this shit into Australia. I can scoff at Noily Pratt, but I paid for it. I can scoff at Noily Pratt. I can scoff at Franca Branca. I paid for this shit. I, let me tell you, you, you want to know some facts? This bottle, let me tell you this. This bottle, this bottle, this bottle, the chartreuse, this bottle, one, two, three, four, this, this five entourage, oh, sorry, and the uh, bitters. This six entourage of bottles, $303 in Australia. All of this, 303 Australian dollars. Got orange bitters. Got uh, creme de la framboise from uh, France. We got green chartreuse. We got Campari vermouth. Uh, sorry, bitters. We got Noily Pratt vermouth. And we got Franca Branca. That was $300 to get into Australia. So as much as I'm sort of giggling at this and, and saying it's not my thing, I paid for it. And when, and when you guys say to me, uh, well, you know, blah, blah, blah. What I'm saying is it all equals itself out, right? Now you might say, but dude, you're getting the benefit of drinking it. Yeah, but I'm doing it live. I could turn the camera off and enjoy this myself and give no value to you yahoos. The idea is that I can do this for you. And by the way, I probably wouldn't be taking these recipes if it wasn't for you guys giving them to me. So you got, you guys basically told me to spend this and then, and then, <laughs> I didn't, I'm not endorsed, like, Lemon Tree Passage Distilling, just because he's my friend, he's not giving me this shit, I'm buying it, right? See you later, Maggie. I'm buying this stuff. 
this is like 60 bucks a bottle. This isn't, and like I'm saying, it's a 500 ml bottle. It's, it's, it's a lot of money for a small amount of alcohol. But it's my friend, I'm, I'm supporting him. I'm doing the right thing, but it's expensive. So what the next thing, Campari, I'll put the Campari. Did I put the Campari in? Shit, I can't remember what I did. Gin, vermouth. We didn't do Campari. Did we do Campari? I don't think we did Campari. We didn't do Campari. No, we didn't. Campari. So a, a shot of Campari. Yeah, we didn't do that because it's red. Preparation. Stir into a glass over ice. Garnish and serve. What's the garnish? The garnish is the orange slice again with the orange slice. Shit. Okay, let's get an orange slice here. Orange slice. There's the orange slice. So it's in a glass. In goes the orange slice. Let's get some ice. Ah, oh, shit, yeah, yeah. Here comes some icicles. Ooh. I mean, I, I feel like we've had this one already. Music Man, it, it wouldn't... Let me just say this, it wouldn't be the first time Music Man has missed a cue. <laughs> I love you, dude, I love you. I love you being in my channel. I love you being in my chat on DLive. I think you might have missed a cue here because that's the exact same drink we've had earlier. And I didn't like it. Anyway, cheers this for a second version of this lousiness. That's the, that's the, the taste of bitterness. Ah, it's bitter. That's bitter as shit. That's bitter as shit. Wow, bitterness. Uh, back in the chit chat, what have I missed here? I think there's alcohol in his drink. Noily Pratt sounds like it tastes like cough medicine. Net TV, dude, that's, I'm, I'm not, dude, I, consider me, uh, Consider me a fucking caveman, but I'm I'm in agreement with that. It's got a it's got definitely got a certain flavorness of medicine for sure for sure. Um, Net TV, uh, it's weird that Centiliters. Alan James, how you doing, Alan? Oh, Alan with a real profile. Hey, by the way, um, Alan, thank you for purchasing the Wham covers album. I saw that. I saw that come through. So I, I, uh, I don't know if you guys don't have enough. I want to say this here, but I, I did make a so stupid. I, I covered the entire Wham album, make it big. I don't, I don't even know why I did it, but I, I did my own version of make it big. Called it make it um, and I put it up on the D Live last night with a link, and I had four people buy it. Um, I appreciate those that paid. Uh, I, I don't want to say names because I, I, I genuinely don't want to either embarrass you or make a thing of it, but somebody paid more than the actual cost. So what I did was I made a, I made a price point and I made the price point from zero dollars, which is completely respectable. And someone paid that and no shade at all. Like I said this, if you want to pay nothing for it, you're completely fine to do that but I made it from $0 to $20 and someone paid $22, which is, I'm really thankful for that and I appreciate that. I'm not gonna call them out, but thank you. And Alan Jans was one of them that bought it. So Alan, thank you, man. I'll take a quick slash here. That's now I've started slashing. It can't stop!
All right. I just took a slash, so I literally just touched my penis. However, I'm putting my hands in the frozen water to wash that shizzle. You know, COVID and all. Could I have gotten COVID between here and there? I don't know, but I just washed my hands to make certain. It can never be too sure. In the chit chat, in the chit chat. It's weird that centiliters are the same as milliliters. That's right, Alan James. Yeah, that, that's yeah, that's a fair call. A uh, fair call. Centiliters are the same as milliliters. Hello, feather. I paid ten bucks, I think. Dude, well, I appreciate you doing that, man. I think that seems fair. Yeah, that that's cool. Oh shit, it's Alan. I mean, at that point though, Charlotte, he did pay for the album. So last last night we got. Tr oh man. Oh, I fully forgot. Oh shit, last night. Wow, we got trolled from the Scooter Brad crew. That's in, that's intriguing. See, I don't think, g given Alan, Alan, I know that there's some shit popping off in the in the distance. I know that there's been some shit between you and Charla and and Henrik and whatnot. I don't think, and I might be wrong. Like I've been wrong before, and I'll be wrong again in the future. But I don't think. I don't think that you are related to the Scooter Brad stuff that happened last night. I, I just, just, but just because of the way that went down, I feel like that was legitimately the Scooter Brad crew, which is completely intriguing. Like it's been three, almost four years since that shit. And for that to pop off again, it was like, welcome to the freaking internet, I suppose. Um, but the difference there, and we, we, we clearly we clearly nailed this, when I turned on subscriber only chat, the moment it became the moment it became like, well if you want to fuck me up, you gotta pay. They're all gone, right? As soon as it became you're you're getting basically those trolls are getting a free run in my chat until I decide no more. And I'm the streamer, so I have the choice. So I can say, well, you're gonna have to subscribe before you can chat. And the moment we did that, not a single troll, right? So they're not willing, so that tells me two things. That tells me they have no funding behind them. So they're, they're not an organization. As much as we see the NQP or whatever the fuck that shit is, they come in saying, we're the, we're the NQ day, NQ pay legion, the, the coordinates, they don't have anything behind them because the moment you turn on, hey man, if you want to troll me, you got to pay. They don't have any money, so they're, they're nothing, right? They're they're just a dude with like two of his mates with alt alt accounts. They're nobodies, and we we discovered that pretty clearly last night. And that's why I think I feel like you're not part of that because you did buy the album, and I and you could have bought it for nothing, right? You could have put nothing, and I would have seen the email, Alan Jams, whatever your email address was. I could have seen, I would have seen that. But you didn't, you put in 10 bucks. So I would suggest, and I know Sharla and, and Hendrik's not even here, but I would, I know, well, I feel, I feel like Sharla might not want to hear this, but I think that last night there was two things going on. I feel like there was the Scooter Brad crew and there was the Alan Jams crew. Now, Alan, I don't know why you troll me. I, I, I don't know you. I, I I feel like I'm nothing to do with it, but then again, I don't mind being a part of it. Like I, I, I love Hendrik and I love Sharla, and she's not even a streamer, but Hendrik does stream. And if you got beef with Hendrik, in some way you got beef with me, even though I don't really have any connection to whatever the beef you have. But I love Hendrik. He's a good, he's a good friend of mine. He's a personal. Like I, I mean, ultimately, I know that guy in real life, and I don't know you, so that obviously far outweighs anything, right? Like you could say what I did this night. Yeah, but I, I know Hendrik. I know him actually as Hendrik Eber in life and you don't. So I automatically have that over you. But that said, whatever, whatever the beef you have with Hendrik and whatever the beef you have with Shyla, I don't think that's related to me. But yet, if I've got to defend anybody or if I've got to, take sides with anybody, it's going to be Hendrik. 
you're gonna you, you, you're you're automatically gonna be behind on that point because I know him so there's that to think about but then again when you buy my album and I literally tell you you can pay nothing for it and you pay 10 bucks for it then I gotta sit up and go well this guy is gonna put up money he's not to be to be to be fair and Charlotte this is probably for you and, and Hendrick if you're watching the replay to be fair Alan James hasn't done anything against me like I've not I've not had anything aimed at me and I've had all kinds of shit aimed at me like I fucking hell uh, everything you could imagine has been slagged at me and I, I get that but not from Alan at this point Un unless Alan unless Alan is Adrian and then that could be another story but I, I don't think he oh shit someone's cooking a barbie man that smells rad someone's got someone's cooking down there so yeah there's that there's that Alan James Back up in the chit chat. Uh, James, same with me. I paid ten bucks. So, so I didn't, I didn't want to say the names of you guys, but James in Germany and Alan Jams, I appreciate you. Same with me. I paid ten bucks, but didn't know it was Australian bus, so it was eight bucks US. Then I gave a triple to make it ten bucks. Dude. Thank you, thank you, James. I wasn't going to say anybody's name. I've, I've obviously, obviously, as the owner of the website, I get the email addresses. I'm not going to do anything with that shit, of course. But I appreciate you. That definitely wasn't Alan. So, you, so, so, Charlotte, you're agreeing. You're agreeing that wasn't Alan last night. It's certainly not between me and Charlotte. It's just the group think. Okay. I just go at Alan because I hear all the things he does, apparently stealing usernames and pretending to be them, getting them banned, etc. Okay, and no, I wasn't part of that. I got I got your message, I got message that people were blaming me for all stuff on your channel. On my channel? You got blamed for stuff on my channel? Fake news, I don't troll you. Has Hendrik told you I had a beef with him? I spoke to him a week ago and everything was fine. Actually, Look, to be completely clear, Hendrik told me you're fine. Yeah, that's true. He told me you're fine. I've heard Alan... Oh my goodness. There is something beautiful smoking up on a barbecue down there right now. Uh, Charlotte Rose says, I've heard Alan on a call in on Discord trying to get a drunken live streamer Hendrik to say and do dubious things about other streamers. He eggs Hendrik on when Hendrik is drunk and then Hendrik gets reamed. <laughs> oh shit. I don't mind a good reaming personally. <laughs> but not always in the bad sense. Uh, laugh out loud, says Alan. Uh, Hendrik called people out. I was happy to agree. Right, I didn't see the stream. I, I, don't, I don't actually know what you guys are referring to. Um, I will add this to the mix. And I'm, I'm no saint here, obvious, ob obviously I'm no saint, but I do enjoy drinking and I do enjoy boozing and getting loose and speaking my mind. And I think, from what I've seen of Hendrik, he he might, Hendrik might teeter on the edge of. So I'm I'm drunk, and then he gets to the point where it's, I'm drunk and anything goes, right? And I I I, I from my interactions, IRL in real life with Hendrik. I think he would accept that that's a fact. Like he gets to a point where he gets totally inebriated and then it's like, fuck you fucking anything happens. Now I'm not saying that's a bad thing and I'm not saying I'm, I'm immune to it because I do it as well. The difference is I won't stream that. Like I'll get, I'll get to a twisted stage and even at, even like, maybe it's because Maybe it's because there's so much tech involved. I'll get to a point where I'm like, "Fuck, man, I'm so drunk right now. If I don't end this stream, I'm gonna, I'm gonna literally just go to bed and leave everything out here, and it's gonna, like, the live view solo, and it, and that, and that happened. Like, I woke up the next day, and it said I was still streaming, and I, it had been 17 hours. Remember that time when I was like, oh, whoops, I." Uh, Apparently, I did a live stream for 17 hours because I was so drunk that I went to bed and left everything on. So, what I'm saying is, maybe there's an, 
experience level, and Hendrik hasn't hit that level yet. He's kind of getting close to it because he's done a he's done a. I mean, he did his naked stream. He, he messed up, and we've all messed up, right? He's gone he's gone through sort of like the lower rung, the lower the lower echelon, and he's moving his way up. And the and the further you go, the well, the higher you go, the the more learn the more learned you get. And until Hendrik does a 17-hour stream, you got nothing on me, Hendrik. That's what I think's happening here. I, I think, and 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 look, Alan, Alan, and this is directed at Alan and at Sharla. You dudes don't stream, so you're you're in a completely separate category here. And it's not like there's no shade here. It's, I'm not I'm not I'm not giving you any shade. I'm just saying matter-of-factly, because you haven't streamed, you haven't actually entered that world where it's like goes from the viewer to the creator it, it is a it's a big jump it's a huge jump when you can jump to that when you can go across that jump and get to that spot of i'm creating as well as you know i'm no longer gonna because you don't see me in my chat very often i don't, I don't put comments in my chat unless it's extremely necessary I'd, I'd rather be the creator and the viewer but you guys have always been the viewer now Charlotte I know you've talked about being a creator and you've talked about when you're gonna do it I would 100% recommend you do it but I would also recommend you do it I would recommend you think about it be very very clear about what you want from it before you start so if you want to start, and Alan, and this is directed either you or Charlotte, if you want to start streaming, be super clear about what you want from streaming. Don't just go, well, I've been a viewer of DLive for two years and I support all my friends and so I thought I'd stream. No. Make sure you have a very specific end goal. I want to build a community. I want to... For me, I want to buy a Cybertruck and travel Australia and live stream the whole thing. That's that's my end goal, right? I've got this focus. I want to buy a Cybertruck with the Cyberlander and I want to travel this whole I want to do this from everywhere live streaming. That's that's you that's why we've had this for the forever the Almighty Electric Van. That's why we've had this thing. That's my goal. So I would suggest make sure you have a a focus and make sure you have a goal. And then, just start. Start the content. Doesn't give a, don't give a rat's what it's like. It could be pretty sketchy. Whatever the internet you've got, doesn't matter. Just make a start. You'll always get better from there. Let me go back to the chat. Uh, so Shala said he eggs Hendrik. This is talking about Alan James. He eggs Hendrik on when Hendrik is drunk, and then he and then Hendrik get Hendrik gets reamed. Yeah, that's that's not cool. That that's that that's taking advantage of a drunk guy, and we've all been there. And that's not cool. Alan says laugh out loud. Hendrik calls people out. I was happy to agree. Okay, Hendrik calls people out. That's that's fine. He he's got beef with someone. That's, that's no sweat. Uh, Alan says, no different than you talking about your issues with other streamers on your channel. Me? Is that at me? Because I, 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 um, I, okay, so if that's at, if that's at me, then that's fair. The, the only issue, I get, I guess, just as, This guy's got his car door open and his stage plan. I guess I want to add two points to this. There's two, there's two, well, not, e not even situations. There's two scenarios, I guess, you could you could put into that. The first scenario is obviously the Gil scenario, right? Like the Gil Poznanski scenario. So that is like, that's a shame. That's a big shame. Um, I still don't really understand it. But it happened. So that's a thing. The other scenario, and it's very, very loose, and it's very, very non-sequential, and it's, and it, 
means nothing to me is the Joker. The Joker called me out on... So he did an interview with, the, with Boomer, right? You, you saw the interview with Boomer Live. And the Joker actually made some pretty heavy uh, accusations against me. And all this time... By the way, are we, are we exposed correctly? Let's go for it. Let's go back. That's better. So all this time, up until then, my, my problem, if you like, or not even a problem, but my concern with the Joker was that I felt like he hasn't got any validity simply because he's copied a character. He hasn't, he hasn't created anything. He hasn't been ingenious. He hasn't been thought-provoking. He's just mimicking a Warner Brothers character. And that to me is boring. His content might be a different story, but I couldn't get past the fucking laughing Joker shit. Because when I see that, all I see is the Batman movies. That's why I couldn't partake in his community, right? Because he he would just go deep into this character of which he's not. And he, he went even deep enough to call himself the real Joker. Like, the real Joker even deep, 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 the real Joker is still a fictional, a fictional character. It's not a real character. Someone made it up. Someone wrote that. It's someone's imagination. It's not you. Like, so you could say, well, I love Jack Nicholson as the Joker. That's an actor. That's an actor portraying a character. So you're, you're making your channel based on a character that can literally be portrayed by any good actor as long as they've got the skills and they'll sign the contract and the, whatever the money. So that's my problem with the Joker. I couldn't get past that, right? I, I couldn't get past it. And then that could be a flaw in me. Well, why couldn't you just enjoy his content and, and ignore the Joker? Well, I, personally, I couldn't. And you might be able to. You, could, you might be able to watch his content and go, I like it. I like all the joking and all the shit. I like all that. I couldn't. So that's just me. So that's why I stopped watching. But then he interviewed Boomer Live and he made some far-flung statements about me and I was like, you know what, man? At that point, I'm done entirely with this guy. So I deleted him from Discord, I blocked him on Twitter, I just moved on. So if you're looking at like drama on DLive with Gibbs a minute, there's the Joker and there's Gil. Gil is a strange one because I don't really understand that. I don't, I don't pretend to understand it. I don't He'll do what he does, and he's doing what he's doing, and I don't, I don't, I just, he said to me, I'll talk to you in the new year. Well, it's, it's, it's May now, and it's, I feel like the new year's come and gone a long time, and he's not talking to me. So I don't feel like Gil and I are going to ever talk again, and the, you could say, well, when was the chance to do that? Well, I would suggest early in the year, like January, February, that would have been the chance to sort of whatever put things together but all that's happened since january is that he's slowly eroded any connection to me like he's blocked me on facebook unfriended me on tw oh sorry unfriended me on facebook removed me on twitter removed me from his discord deleted any reference of me on on his d live channel like his his story of how he came to d live doesn't even include me which is completely inaccurate but whatever like I just been completely whitewashed and I didn't do anything that's the thing so he's taken a stance and if you want to if you want to find beef that's the beef you'll find that I got treated super weirdly because of a troll in Gil's chat and Gil never dealt with that that troll like as a streamer you're obligated to make sure your chat maintains a certain respectable limit right you've got you've, you're responsible for your own chat and I said to him dude this is the rat rotter is Adrian Banks in your chat right now take action and he wouldn't he would not take action and the reason he wouldn't take action because the top contributor to that stream was the rat rotter and I was like I don't know what to say man like th this guy this guy is responsible for so much shit against me and here he is in your stream donating the highest and you're not going to say jack and he, and then and then he turned it around to me and said well how about you 
you're a moderator, how about you act on it? So it's your stream, Gil. This is your content. I'm telling you the fact. You've got to take action. Not me. I'm a moderator, but it's your stream. You take action. And and by the way, all the separate conversations that Gil and I had had, all the private convers all the DMs, all the phone conversations we'd had about Adrian Banks, at that point, if Gil was a friend of mine, he would have been like, what? Seriously, man? That's the dude? That's the dude we've been talking about for all these months? Are you serious? Done. Hang on one second, man. Done. It would have been, a, it would have been handled within 20 seconds. But for whatever the reason, and I still don't get it, I still don't get it, Gil would not take action and he's made that a thing against me all this time until where are we now May 2021 and every and the further we moved in he's deleted every communication I, I can't even talk to him on Facebook because he's delete I can't talk to him on messenger he's deleted me he's blocked me on discord he's I, 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 there's no communication between me and him and all of it because of a troll just fucking stupid and that and that's what I'm saying like you can have like these these levels of relationships and these interconnecting I, I would have thought that because like I brought I brought Gil to D Live. Like I totally brought him. I was talking to I'm I'm making dinner on the barbecue at home for Tim and the kids and I'm talking to Gil with my phone in my elbow saying man you should come to D Live hey like I know you're I know you're focused on your maker stuff on YouTube and you've got your, your two channels and, and I'm I'm literally cooking food. I'm going you should Check out DLive, man. It's a pretty cool... DLive? What's DLive? Oh, yeah, it's a good... It's 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 blockchain. And I'm talk. I spent a lot of time convincing someone who was so dead set on YouTube. Like, he was like, no, nah, YouTube, man. YouTube is it. I convinced him to come over to DLive. And now, the narrative from him is... It wasn't Gibbs. It was... What's his friend's, mate, uh, friend's name in New York? Is it Ian? Josh, Joel, Josh. No, it's Josh. I think it's Josh. I think it's Josh. Josh in New York. That's how he got on DLive. I'm like, um, that's not exactly accurate, but all right, if you, that's, that's how you want to portray it, then it's just, it just sucks. Because now there's like, obviously Gil's gone ahead and done like, like he's made connectivity to other streamers and like, there's obviously this sort of, there's this, let's, let's call it a, not a facade, but there's a, there's a niche, niche, that's a good word, there's a niche of streamers on DLive, but we've got to change the exposure here, that's the wrong way. So there's a certain amount of streamers on DLive that are within a certain click. Click, click, click better than niche, click. And like, I was asked to come on on a stream and partake in certain things. And I said, look man, to be honest, I don't want to be involved in that simply because Gil's involved. So there is a situation that's ongoing and until that ongoing situation resolves itself I, I can't I can't I can't go across and pretend it's all hunky-dory and hang out and and do whatever like I, I this is a weird oh wow there's a lot of cloud going on there this is a weird situation between me and him and like dude, check what's going on over here there's a big cloud bank look at that it's gonna just get darker and darker from here yeah, I was I was extremely clear about that. Like, I, I, oh, that's too far across. I can't I can't partake in in anything like that until until this is resolved. And I don't I don't see that it being resolved. Anyway, I'm gonna take a quick slash here, and and then I'm gonna put a jacket on and come back. What a jacket? Well, it's autumn. It's the fall.
weird. Sorry about that, folks. I just thought I saw a. I thought I saw. A, I thought I saw a shark in the shallows here. These guys are looking at something, and I was like, "What the hell are they looking at?" All right, let's go back in the chat and read because I know I've been blabbering for a long while. Alan James. The difference is Hendrik. Hendrik gets smashed by these people, Charlotte. But then Hendrik gets the shit kicked out of him, so to speak, because of people egging him on. I have streamed, says Alan James. I got reported in DLive Guardian shut it down. Oh, you've done a stream, Alan. Okay, I didn't know that, dude. I didn't know that. Charlotte Rose says, instead of being a friend and saying, hey, dude, I think you should shut this shit down, they say, keep it going. Alan says, Charlotte, I said to Hendrik multiple times on that stream to shut it, shut it down. But I'm not his boss. If he wants to call people out for how they're behaving, other streamers, their donators, that's his choice. Charlotte says, I only saw it towards the end and he was off his tea cozy. <laughs> That's an Australian saying for he was twisted. Off his tea cozy. <laughs> off his tea cozy. And definitely should not have been streaming. I like Hendrik. So who took advantage? He egged me on to join his voice stream. Nothing I'm saying is towards you, Giz. I understood. Understood, Alan. Understood. The problem is, Alan, that people that are close to Hendrik automatically get put into that category of She's on his side, the gossip mill starts, then backstabbing, ooh. Over something I have nothing to do with. Admit it, admit it Alan, you're a shit, a shit stirrer. Now, you're, now you are making sense, Alan. You thrive on this shit. Not all the time. Alan says, if someone wants to make an issue, I'm usually happy to oblige. So you do then, that's not fair on innocent people that support the other streamers and get labeled as sidekick to some trouble. So you're saying that Alan Jams' shit stuff rubs off on you. You're basically, Alan says, you're basically saying that if someone goes after me, I should just leave. Charlotte says, I'm not as stupid. I know people from the people that Henrik has a go at unmod me and talk smack about me because of it. Alan says, Henrik said what he wanted to say because that's what he wanted to say. David. What's up, YouTube friend? Hey, how you going? How you doing, David? Good to see you, man. Sorry, man, we were just in the middle of something, man, but nice to see you, dude. I'm not his puppet master. And then Charlotte says, you kind of are, Helen. Hear you later, Gears. Been a long day, 14 hours. Good night. No worries, Mrs. Charlie. And good night, Charlie64 as well. Happy uh, 29 years to you, Yahoos. Sorry, I, I know I'm behind in the chat, but have a good sleep. Mrs. Mrs. and Mr. Alan, ja um, Alan James. Uh, sorry, Charlie, 64. Sorry, I'm, I'm, yeah. I called out a pregnant streamer smoking on a panel on a popular DLive streamer. Is that a troll? Not really. I would have done that too, Alan. That's, that's fucked. Yeah, so there's nothing wrong with that. Miami Tab. Hello, Miami. How you doing? How you doing, Miami? So, what do you think that drink would be like with Jack rather than gin? Ooh, wow, that's a good question. I don't have a bottle of Jack with me, but I would love one. Um, I gotta tell you, I reckon it'd be tits. I reckon it'd be tits. Because I'm not a huge gin guy. If I'm being frank, I'm not a, I'm not a huge gin guy. Botanics and acacia and... I got that shit when I go through a, a walk in the Royal Botanic gardens. Right? I, 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 I want to drink whiskey. Alan, in fact, Charlotte, I've only spoke highly of you. I, th I appreciate that, Alan. I've always told you up front what I think. A lot of issues could be solved or avoided if everyone would do the same, not start a bloody gossip mill and act like seventh graders. Damn. Right on, Charlotte. All good, Charlotte. I will tell you, though, I have seen you ban people in channels and accusing them of me. I laugh, but also wonder what does it take to... Alan, the trouble is with that, so, and I can speak on Charlotte's behalf, there are so many dubious, so many dubious channels that come in, and how do we know? How do, how do we know that they're not dicks? We don't know. You can only act on your instinct. There's someone new, ban them. I never ban anyone unless they give a reason other than me thinking it's you. 
I guess. Can I can I jump in at that point? I put a jacket on here as well because the sun's disappeared. Can I jump in at that point and say, with respect to the disagreements between Sharla and Hendrik and Alan, none of that is related to me. So when when a when a channel that could be Alan Jams comes into my chat and starts talking shit, it's not actually. It's not actually related to me. Like, I feel like I can I can deal with that. Like, kind of. I mean, I, I I'm just thinking of it selfishly here. Like, when it when it when it's aimed at me, when when this when the sledge is aimed my way, I've got to take response. And I feel like last night was a good example of that. Right? Like there was a good example of how there was a, a, an angle or an angel that was aimed directly at me. The, the, the humorous thing there is that that angel hadn't, hadn't shown itself in four years. It was, all, it was almost the equivalent of like an ex-girlfriend coming in going, You forgot to put the bin out, man! That was 12 years ago! Oh shit, sorry. What was it, Tuesday night? Sorry. That's what, to me, to me last night, when that happened, I was like, seriously? This is, a, this is, this is digging up from that long ago? What the fuck are we, what are we gonna do with this? Like, how are we gonna deal with this? What, are, what? I haven't even thought about this in three years. And like, the guy said, don't you remember me? And he's like, I'm the, um, the mouse thing. What was his, I'm the short fat mouse or something the short the short quick mouse I was like no I don't, I don't remember the short quick mouse why would I remember that like and then he's then the the gay bar I can't I want to tweet that out actually I want to I want to get a screenshot of the gay bar that was funny the gay bar that was really funny actually that was good that was good graphic design yeah I, he's got good deep etching skills but I, I did not remember that and why would I why would I even think about that shit yet they come back thinking like I'm gonna to totally jump back into like gives a minute circa 2012 or 2016, 2015. I don't even remember that shit. Yeah, that's, that was weird. Alan, I've always been happy to talk to anyone, not hide any gossip. Discord and reporting to the live. So, Alan, at that point, what, what your, your statement? I've always been happy to talk to anyone, not hide or gossip anyone. Discord. So, Alan, you're saying you've never come in with a different handle? I mean, that that's that's an easy way to sort of navigate this 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 path. Have you ever come onto a D live stream with a handle that's not Alan Jams? Have you have you made have you ever made multiple handles that are not yours for the sake of trolling? That's kind of what I'm asking. David, God, I love to listen to the drama gives. Hey David, how you doing man? Appreciate that. I I I, I don't dislike drama, but this this drama this drama is not even related to me. That's that's the strange thing. Like, you know what? If Alan Jans was saying Gives, I fucking hate you because of Gil. I hate you. I'd be like, oh, okay. Now it's aimed at me. I, I get that. It's twisted itself towards me. Okay, okay, cool. That hasn't happened though. I'm, I'm clear. I, for the first time ever, I haven't done anything. Hey, I'm, I'm totally clear. And you can't twist this around and say it's your, it's all your fault, Gives. I haven't done anything. I'm not. I'm completely in the clear here. So fuck you all. And fight amongst yourselves, and I'll partake. I'll take sides. My, sh my side's going to be Shala, of course. But fuck you all. I'm I'm clear here. I didn't do a thing. It's not my fault. If you kids can't play together nicely, I'll take the sand pit and put it back in the garage. At the end of the day, the streamer can always overturn any banning the mods do. Now, yeah, I know that, Charlotte, but I, I wouldn't do that. Like, I, I respect you and Hendrik. I respect what you guys choose because, like, you, I've given, I've given you the spot. I, I, 
I would never overturn. If I overturned you, that would that would be me saying to you, I don't believe in you. I totally believe in you. So I'm not going to overturn anything you do. Inle unless, like last night, when it happened very quick and I didn't see it. And I even said to you guys, I even said, um, should we should we unmute Mouse? What, Mouse? Mousey. There were two channels. And I suggested, should we unmute them? And you guys all agreed, yeah, unmute them. And I, I remember seeing later on, there was a comment from, I think it was James in Germany saying, all right, gives us that his fun, let's move on. Yeah, it, it, it was a little like that, I'm not gonna lie. It was a little like, yeah, I'm gonna play with these fuckers for a while. Cause they, cause they, they think that they're controlling shit. They think that they're in control. But the moment you turn on subscriber only chat, they're fucking gone. They don't get that, they, they don't, they got nothing. They're just dicks, right? Shelf mouse, that was the one, shelf mouse, yeah. Alan says, I got banned from your channel a few days ago and I saw multiple others banned because mods thought they were me. Well, why would that concern you? If they weren't you, if that wasn't you, why would that even concern you though? Why would that even concern you? Music man in the house, music man, we, try, we tried your mix, dude, and I didn't like it, I didn't like it. I was rewinding and that was the second drink you made, so twice you made this. I always thought of a mooth was added to cocktails. So we made this, Keith, um, Keith. Music man, thank you, thank you. Thank you for putting the suggestion in. We've had this drink twice now. It's not, I don't like it. I wouldn't do it again. I wouldn't do it a third time. But it's good, it's good to see you, music man. I was and am a falcon. A falcon? I'm not sure what a falcon is. You're also on Benel's Discord under a few names. Really? Alan, ask, answer me this. Uh, I think I'm up to speed with the chat. I wasn't those people on your stream last night or this Adrian person. In fact, I wanted to confront them on your Discord, but they banned me. No one said that was you last night, Alan. Shala Snoop is on his Discord. We lean towards Adrian. So, uh, so Alan, let me ask you this, dude. Uh, as a matter of fact, do you have multiple accounts on DLive or Discord that you post under? Or is it always Alan James? Are you posting under different handles? I can't get any clearer than that. I am, I am Snoop and Sega Oranga. So you got two, you got two accounts on Discord. You got Snoop and Sega Ranger. Okay. I don't post normally. So, you, so, so those are, those are alt accounts that you use temporarily from time to time, right? What's what's the crack there? Like, what what's the idea behind that? Like, what, why do you why do you feel like you need to have extra accounts? Like, I, I mean, just speaking matter of factly from a streamer's point of view. I find it difficult to, to maintain one account, one channel. Like, why, why, why do you feel like you need to? Sega Ranger was banned last night too for the, for the N-word. Is that right? No, I wasn't. There was a, there was, I came into the Discord and there was like, do you know what, you know what's funny about that? Get, let, let me, let me put this forward. Now this could get me banned off YouTube, but let me put this forward. Somebody comes into my Discord and puts the word nigger, 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 and then they copy and paste it like 20,000 times. So at that particular point, what's, what's the accusation? Are they saying, like, Translate this to a, another race. What about if you put the word whitey? Whitey, 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 whitey. What's, what's, what's the point behind that? Like, they're not, they're not saying, like they're not coming in saying, you're a whitey, you're a whitey. They're just, they're literally just putting the word repeatedly. So like, what are you, how are you supposed to read that? Are you supposed to read like, 
Because the equivalent in real life would be someone walking into a room and just going, whitey, 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 whitey. Like that would make no sense, right? Absolutely no sense. But if it's done the other way, suddenly it's offensive. Like the smart, the smart response to that wouldn't be offense. The smart response would be, oh, this guy's a real moron. What are you doing? You're, you're coming in somewhere and you're stating a word repeatedly. You're not actually saying anything about the word. It's like, it's like saying rape, right? If I came into a chat and said, rape, 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 rape. You're not, you're not saying somebody raped somebody. You're not saying there's, there's, a, there's a child that's been raped. You're just saying the word rape, which obviously has negative connotations, but it's just the word. It's like saying fire, right? Fire, fire, fire. Yeah, fire can burn houses down. We've all seen that. Case in point, across the street from my house. Fire is nasty. What about, what about hurricane, hurricane, hurricane? You see how stupid this is? What about massive swell, massive swell, massive swell? What about, uh, uh, Offshore wind, offshore, like you see what I'm saying? Like it's so stupid for someone to come in and repeatedly put the word nigger. It's like, it's, it's not offending. The only person that offends is the absolute lowest of the lowest, where they think that simply seeing the word is offensive. Whereas how do we know that the person typing it wasn't a black dude that is actually entitled to put the word in a chat, right? How do we know? We don't know, and we can't know, and we will never know. So why would we, why would we, why would we be upset about that? It's just a fucking word. Ice caps, avalanches, avalanche, avalanche, avalanche. Avalanche is gonna kill you before that is. It's weird, right? We, we're, we're at a point. I'm gonna just try, drop this down. We're at we're at a point in 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 life where it's like, do you do you seriously think putting that word is offending me? That's not offending me at all. That's confusing me. You putting that word twenty thousand times in my Discord is simply a, is confusing me. I'm not offended by it because I know that word. I've grown up. I'm I'm an adult. I'm not offended by the word. I'm confused by your use of the word. Fucking weird, right? Totally weird. What a funky world we live in. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Gives, David. It's, it sounds to me that trolls don't know how to tell the time, tell it, sorry. David, it sounds to me that trolls don't know how to tell the truth as they sit behind the computer and judge other people on social media. Yeah, that, that, this is totally the thing. I'm taking a quick slash here. I'm taking a quick slash here. Ultimately though, folks, we do live in a funky world. And I, I live in this world, I partake in this planet, just like the rest of you. But it is strange, it is strange. I'm not suggesting I have the answer. Miami, maybe saying Negroni three times means drink that drink. Bottoms up, maybe it's supposed to taste like that to shut you down, slip and ginger. Dude, 
maybe that's what that was. <laughs> well, I didn't see that in the Discord until much, much, much later, but you, you might have a point there. You might have a point. I don't know, like, I just, I just find it intriguing that on the internet, in 2021, the trolls, the ones that think they're better than the streamers, right? This, so don't forget this, the streamer puts their face onto camera. So they're not hiding. I'm not hiding behind a fucking, I'm not hiding behind anything. Hey, you, you, you know who I am. You know I'm a 45 year old male with a massive forehead with a big fucking bung toe. You, I'm not hiding jack shit here. So I'm out there doing my thing and the trolls hide behind multiple handles. Alan Jams, you're one of them. Hide behind multiple handles and put this shit in the in the Discord and in the chat. And the simple like break it right down. The simple fact of putting the word nigger multiple times into a chat. I don't get how that's supposed to offend. If if anything, that raises a question more than an offense. Doesn't that doesn't that make you question something? Like if this person puts the word nigger repeatedly in a chat, just the same as someone else coming in putting the word German in the chat repeatedly, you'd be like, what, 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 what's, what's your connection to Germany? What, 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 what are you so intrigued in Germany? Like, I, like then, just, just to be clear, they're not, they're not saying I'm a nigger or I devalue, they're just putting the word and that is like, how, how is that offensive? It's just confusing. Like I said, it's just, it's no different than putting the word rape, right? You could put the word rape a hundred times. It's like, okay, rape, rape is a bad thing. Are you talking about a specific case? Do you, do you know someone who's been raped? Are you a raper? No, 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 no. Just the concept of rape. Well, that in itself isn't offensive. That's just the definition of the thing. That's like saying gravity or pain, right? Like you fall over, you smash your knee against the curb and it bloodies up. That's pain, that's bad, no one wants that. Pain, 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 pain. Okay, so, so you have a thing with pain. But that's what I'm saying, like, why is it always nigger? Like, what is that? Like, is it supposed to turn it around on the content creator and, and they're supposed to say, well, I don't respect that. I don't even understand that. How can I respect it if I don't understand? Like, you're just putting a word. It could be any word. It could be seagull. Stupid. You know why though? That's because they're so, that's the difference between a content creator and a troll. The content creator has the, uh, what's the word, veracity or the, the tenacity to go, hey man, I'll put, I'll put my fucking face on this. I will, I will vouch for myself on this content because I am not hiding. And yet trolls will hide behind any number of Alan Jams accounts and they will put whatever they want in a chat. They'll hide behind that shit. But we're not hiding, we're not hiding behind anything. But yet we get given and we're supposed to go, oh, because you said nigger, suddenly we're bad? Get the fuck out, it's fucking stupid. And all you're describing is a black man. So what? There's a French man, there's a Canadian, there's a Swiss dude, there's a guy from England. What the fuck? Who gives a shit? We're all, we're all from somewhere. It's fucking stupid. I can't, I... It's so stupid. It's so stupid. Everybody, everybody has the chance to be somebody. Yet, these trolls somehow think that, like, stating a race is somehow winning. Fuck me. So stupid. Hey, Benny's in the house. Hey, Benny. How you doing, man? Afternoon, Ben. On. I could not guess on the cap game yesterday and said subscriber only and folks in your chat wouldn't. Yeah, Benny, we had a, we had an interesting one yesterday. 
Yeah, but that's okay, man. We, we changed it. We, it, was, it was temporary, Benny. So I got one more uh, gin cocktail to try here. One more. So let's open up the... So this is the last one. This is from Giggle Pickles. Yo, Giggles, are you okay? I don't know if she's down here. She's not, she's not down here. Gin and orange juice. Giggle Pickles. Now, you didn't give any recommendations of measurements so i'm going to assume we're going to go with one for one right we're going to take a gin actually we'll go two shots of gin what do you say 50 50 we'll go one shot of gin this is the last one folks till we take a freestyle one there's two shots of gin lemon tree passage distilling Jinsky. So we've got le uh, orange juice here. I'm gonna I'm gonna squeeze this orange over the top of this. It's gonna get messy. I sh should do it. I'll do it over here. Because I'm not I'm not gonna sit next to this. Oh shit. Whoopsie. All right, we got one orange juice here. And now we go with another one. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna cut a second orange juice. Cut a second orange here. Ich bin orange and soft. Hey Benny, I wanna to talk to you about the Colborough Beach Board Riders Club. I wanna to talk to you about that in a second. I don't think I'm going to join. Okay, well, given, given that we've actually dropped a lot of orange juice next to that, I reckon we're pretty clear in terms of, let me just clean my hands this year. I reckon we pretty much nailed it in terms of orange and soft. So, 50-50, gin and orange juice. Let me grab a bit of ice here. This is the last, oh shit, this is, the, this is almost the end of the ice. Giggle Pickles said gin and orange juice. Giggle Pickles. Oh shit, there's a dead mozzie in there. Let me get that out of there. Let me get a little, little more orange, orange and soft. Ich bin orange and soft. There we go, folks. Gin and orange juice. Giggle pick. You know what we should do? We should put this on. That's an orange. That's an orange uh, peel. That's better in that glass. Ich bin orange and soft. Giggle pickles. Cheers for the recommendation. Wee ya, wee ya, wee! Gin and orange juice. That concludes all the ingredient recommendations from you, you lovely yahoos. Let's go back to the chat. It upset me. I thought you blocked me. Oh no, Benny, we, we, didn't, we didn't block you, dude. No, no, not at all, dude. Because folks who were not subs were chatting and couldn't understand that. No, we did we did it temporarily. Hey, by the way, can I can I add the cinnamon stick back in here? No, I'll leave it. This is this is the last recommendation of the of the drink. So what we're gonna do? I'll drink this and then we'll have one more, and you yahoos will decide what that is. So I'll let you guys choose whatever you want from this mix. But Benny, let me let me um. Let me talk to you about this. So there's there's a, and you can Google this if you want, go on Facebook and check it out. There's the Culborough Beach Board Riders Association. Uh, so that, and, and today they had a, they had a comp, a point, point score, point score.
I'm not, I'm not going to deny this. After the punch to the head, it, surfing has meant a bit, it's, it's changed to me. The, the, I don't even really know how to explain it, but... Surfing... Something needs to change. There needs, there needs to be a change. And it needs to be community. There needs to be a community. I, I, I feel like... I've, I've felt... I've felt pretty comfortable delivering my content for so long on my own. But now there is... Now there is people that do not want me to do this. There, and, and in this community, in this town, there are people and they just happen to be the fucking shredders. But the, the dudes that I aspire to, they do not want me doing this. And that's been difficult to resonate with. That's been like, they're the shredders. They're the guys that I look up to and they fucking hate me to the point where they'll punch me in the head and throw rocks at me during a live stream. So I'm, I'm struggling to sort of work this out. Like I, I want to keep surfing and I want to keep I want to keep documenting my surfing, but it seems like the North Point, like Crookhaven Heads, is out of bounds for me because they lit he literally said, we will smash your camera gear. I've got 10, 10 dudes of mine that will smash your camera gear if we see you here again. I'm like, man, I just want to surf. I just want to document my surf. But I've been told clearly, like, there's no ambiguity here. Like they've literally told me, you're not fucking welcome to surf here and document this. You're not, you're not, you're not allowed to film this. So I've kind of tried to process that. And today it was a fucking big, big swell. And there was a there was a point score comp at the river mouth. And I was like, maybe I should just sign up here and start surfing in the competitions. What, what this has done for me, it, I'll, I'll be honest, it's... It's put me off surfing. That's what this has done. It's coincidental that the waves haven't been great in the last two weeks, but today and arguably less yesterday, there's there's been good waves. But I, I yeah, I don't feel like I want to go surfing anymore because I feel like if these guys are out there, they're just they're not. They're not frothing on this. They're not excited by it. They're, they're hating. They hate this. To the point where they'll fucking punch me in the head in the lineup. Like, this is a, this is a guy who I was like, dude, I, all I want to do is get as good as you. Like, you're a fucking shred. I want to I wanna learn everything that you've learned over however long you've been served. I want to get better to be good like you. And, and all he wants to do is fucking knock me out. Like, beat me up to the point where I'm going to fucking... And I know that off the front of my house, like ha what, ha what happened like, what happened a year and a half ago, the Borough Boys, they came in and said, man, you should be surfing, you should surf the North Point, dude. You're getting better. Like you should be up there on the left. You should be getting the left. Like, go to the river mouth, get, get the barrels. Like, what are you doing? What do you, what do you keep surfing this front of beach fucking whatever the break is? It's fucking shit, hey? And I was like, yeah, you're right, you're right. But I don't, I don't think that I've got the skills to mix it with those guys because they're the fucking rippers. 
It took me like two seasons to get confident enough. And it was with Sam when, I don't know if you remember Sam being down here. It took, it took him and me together the confidence to go and tackle that point break with the bodyboarder, right? And I was like, yeah, I, I feel confident now. I feel like I've got, I feel like I'm confident enough to take off on that left. You fast forward six months from that, it turns out everything I've done since then, these, these guys hate it. They hate that I'm doing this. They want to smash my camera gear. He fucking threw rocks at me and punched me in the head just for surfing. And he's a surfer. I just, I... So, so, as I've been thinking about this, I've been thinking, well, why don't I join the association? So therefore I'm in with the surfers and I could say, hey man, I don't know about you. I don't know how you guys feel about it. I don't, I don't want to badmouth anybody, but there's a guy, Gavin Walker, who's punched me in the surf. He says I'm blowing up Colborough Beach. Uh, can, can I get any support here? Like, do I, do I, I'm not, I'm not doing anything like, for fuck's sake, I'm not even a fucking surfer. I'm just a kook. It's fucking shit. Fucking sucks is what this, this is, this sucks, this sucks. All I want to do is surf and get better. Same as bullies in high school trying to break the human spirit. That's, I can't believe as a 45 year old I'm getting bullied. Like, I. Can you fathom this? Can you fathom, like, this, this guy, Gavin Walker, is bullying me. What are we fucking seven years of age in high school? This is stupid. It's fucking stupid. He's surfing the break that I surf and he bullies me. It's fucking stupid. What am I, what am I supposed to do here? Like... Fuck. Fucking, it's, it's... You gotta get back out there. You're getting impressive. But what's, what's, what's the, what's the, what's the... I go back out there, Charlotte, and I get punched in the head, and I and I I pass out. What what's? I never thought about this, man. But Perd Beer said it in my chat, dude. Punching someone in the surf is so irresponsible because, what if he connected? He didn't. He didn't connect at that point. Yeah, my my ear feels fine now. There's no. Yeah, there's absolutely no. There's no tender spot there now, it's all completely fine, but imagine he connected. Im imagine, imagine he connected with a spot and I blacked out. I'm dead. I'd literally drown. And this guy has a manslaughter case. It's all fucking on the, on the solo shot, it's all filmed, right? For him to deny it to the cops and say, well, we had an altercation, but there was no punch. It's on the fucking camera, dickhead. It's on the camera. So, are you comfortable physically punching someone that you know creates content? Like you, it, it just coincidentally happens to be that my GoPro had expired, so the battery was dead, but are you 100% confident that I'm not filming somewhere else? Are there a drone or a, a wide shot on the, on the beach? Like, like, you're gonna kill me, man. You're gonna, you, are you cool with, are you cool with fucking manslaughter? Because some dude is blowing up Colborough Beach. I'm blowing up Colborough Beach, you fucking imbecile. Owen Wright, he's on the world circuit. What town's he from, you dickhead? This is his town, Colborough Beach. Okay, he doesn't live here now. He's from Colborough Beach. This is his town. He's traveling the world circuit in the surfing league right now. And you think a 20,000 subscriber 
400 view fucking kook is blowing up YouTube for Colborough Beach, Owen Wright's blowing up Colborough Beach, you dickhead. You absolute moron. Red Vest, you're a moron. If you think I'm blowing up Cold Bar Beach, I've got no play in that. I'd like to. I've got no play in that. I've got fucking 400 views on every video. There's jack shit going on there, you moron. And you're going to punch me in the head, in the lineup, because I'm blowing up this place? You're so stupid. Stupid. And all I want to do is surf and get better the way you are. And yet, I'm the bad guy. It's fucking so stupid. What are we... Let's go back to, like, grade three where mummy said mummy and blah, blah, blah. You're fucking imbecile. And you know what it's done? It's stopped me from surfing. I've, I'll be honest. I've been like, you know what? I don't, I don't want to... I don't want to risk a punch to the head with this fuckwit. I don't want to die because this guy's a fucking mental case. That's what's that's what it's done to me. It's it's changed my um, concept of what surfing is. We've got a, a crew turn up here. In case it's in case it's a red vest guy, we've got to document this. Oh, they're backing out. Anyway, that's my point, right? Like, why why are we at this point? We're both surfers. It makes no sense. I want to hug you. I need a hug. I, I, I tell you what I need. I need, I need a sur I need a surfer to say, dude, forget this shit, right? Forget this shit. Like this guy's a moron. He's a, he's, he's mentally, he's, someone said in the chat, these people that do this go home and beat their wives. That's, I need that clarification. Benny. Please stop, cons Steve, please, stop, please stop being concerned with what anyone thinks about your surfing. It makes you happy. Do it. Benny, I don't, know if you, I don't know if you know, man. Benny, I don't know if you know what happened, man. I, I, I haven't said it to you because I... To be honest, Benny, I've actually felt pretty embarrassed by this. I've felt pretty embarrassed. I'm going to crank the ISO here. Just give me a... Yeah, I, Benny, I felt, bit, I, I felt a pretty embarrassed by this, but I got punched in the head in the lineup um, by Red Vest. This is a guy who I've nothing but respect for for so long. He's a shredder. Him and him and about at least five other dudes in this town are absolute shredders. Um, I've I've spoke to him in the chat. You've seen videos of him and me chatting in the in the surf before in the lineup. We've been talking and then he flipped out completely flipped out and punched me in the head and it's all on camera man like and like I reported it to the cops and the, the cops are like well you can you can put on an AVO and apprehended violence order against him then I did a live stream we went back down and watched kind of like today it was a beautiful offshore wind and there was a nice swell and we went down and watched the sw we watched the surfing and then they threw rocks at me on the stream so just I'll just I'll just leave that with you just, just temporarily, I'll leave that with you, uh, Benny. This guy, a shredder, red vest, a shredder. Like, first, first of all, he got him, he got it all wrong. A anyway, the video uh, doesn't even. No, none of this makes sense, right? But I'm just going to take a piss, and you can. If I go out now, they've threatened me. He said there are ten of us who will smash your cameras. If he's, he literally said to me, do not surf the North Point, do not surf Crookhavens, do not be here, go and do it back down mids, like where I live on the mid beach, right? Just a beach break. Go on, do not come back up to the North Point. We do not want you here. And if we see you here, me or 10 of my mates will smash your fucking gear. Do not come back here. I'll leave that with you while you think about what my response should be. And this has been going on for a month or two, and I and it, it's ruined my surfing. I, I've been, I'm frightened. I'm frightened. I'm frightened for my safety. I'm frightened for my camera gear. I'm I'm frightened. The swell's on right now. I'm frightened. I don't want to go there. I'm frightened. And it's fucking shit.
All right. That's the question. That's the question. I guess we should wrap this up pretty soon. What a shit, what a shit situation. Yeah. It is. It's pretty shit. I didn't hear the start of the surf thing, but maybe they thought you were filming them. Well, if they, they watch the content, they do they do see the content, so they, they know the content, they know it's not them. I'll tell you what we're gonna do, we're gonna wrap this up. I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna get out of here. Benny, don't worry about filming anything. Go surfing. If they assault you, have them charge. Surfing is public sport. It's difficult to hide that even without a camera. Anyone can beat the beach. No, Alan, it's not their break. It's everyone's break. Right on, Hendrik. Right on, Hendrik. How you doing, by the way? Um, my, my only concern, Benny, with your comment, my concern there is I've always documented my surfing. The idea was to document it to get better. You wouldn't, Benny, you wouldn't have made me a fucking custom design board, right? You would, and can I, I don't want to smoke you, I don't want to smoke you, Benny Crawford, but can I just say that I've had people, and I'm not going to say names, I've had two people outside of my YouTube channel, like nothing to do with my YouTube content, ask me, how did you get endorsed by Benny Crawford? How did he make you a board? Two different people. I'm not going to tell you who they are. I'm not going to go down that avenue. But there's two people that have said, how did that come about, man? And whenever I've, whenever I've been in the water and someone said to me, how did you get your R's and, and Bell's, uh, Bell's Wax and R's and Wetsuits sponsorship? I'm like, dude, I 100% acknowledge this. None of that's for my surfing ability. Bell Surf Wax aren't, surfing, aren't sponsoring me because I'm a good surfer. Arzen don't give me wetsuits because I'm a good surfer. No, they give me wetsuits and surf wax because I make content. And so when fucking Red Vest dude says to me, don't make videos here, I'm like, dude, I don't come into your house and say, hey, you can't do your trade. You can't go and do whatever the job you've made your life about for the last 20 years. I'm not telling you how to live your life. Why the fuck should you tell me how I can live my life? I'm making a living surfing and I'm nowhere near the level you are. I'm so far below you, but I'm learning and I'm making a living doing it. Is that the problem here? No. Well, you're blowing up Colborough. How can I be blowing up Colborough Beach when Owen Wright fucking comes from here? How can that even be a thing? I don't, how can I, how can me, a lousy YouTuber with 20,000 subs and 400 views on a video. How can I even be close to blowing up Colborough Beach when Owen Wright, what is he, number seven on the world circuit right now? He, he, he was born here. If anything, he's the one blowing up Colborough Beach, not me, you dumb fuck. Yet I get beat in the fucking head and rocks thrown at me for live streaming. These people are fucking immature. They're fucking amateurs. They're fucking... It's, it, it's ruining my surfing. It's ruining it. And that's why I'm thinking I'm going to join up to the, the fucking Colborough Beach board riders. I'm going to join up to them. I'm going to say, look, I just want to join up. I want to meet good surfers. I don't want to hang out with... I don't want to be... Like, I go surfing now and I feel like every single person hates me. Everyone in the lineup's like, there's that fucking... And I got a GoPro here and I got a, a mount on my arm. They're all... That's that fucking YouTuber. So they all hate me, right? I, I'm, I'm hated in, in Colborough Beach. I'm nobody. I'm nobody. Yet I'm hated. It's fucking stupid. It's, fu it's ruining. It's ruining my surfing. It's ruining it. Hate it. Benny, I'm gonna give you a link, man. I'm gonna give you a link, Benny. I'm gonna give you a link to a private video. Hang on a second. I'm gonna give you a link to a private video, Benny. Just give me a second. Okay, Benny, I'm gonna send you a link.
Okay, this is just for Benny. Oh, how can I do this? Um, um, Benny, I'll do it on Facebook. I'll send you. A, I'll send you a Facebook Messenger post. So, Benny, this this what I'm sending you on Facebook. This is a. This is the. This is the private video I sent to the cops. That's the punch to the head. So that link there is private, so don't send it to anybody. That's the punch to the head. And that clearly shows the incident. And like, so where we're at right now is that there's a police report on that incident. And uh, the, str the strange thing is, which I guess is not that strange considering how fucking weird this is, but his name's Gavin Walker. Gavin Walker has completely denied the punch, but there's the video, right? So he's denied that it even happened, and yet there's the video evidence. So what I'm saying is, we're not dealing with someone that's in, in their right mind, right? They're, they're not in their right head. They're, 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 they've lost it. Hang on one second. Hey, hey. Well, I'm still streaming. What time is it now? Ah, oh, is Anya there? Okay, I'll be there soon. Is everybody there now? Oh, I've been told, I gotta go home. <laughs> what is it, is it, is it five o'clock? Oh wow, it's 5 p.m. Wow, that went quick. I guess I gotta wrap this up. My sister was coming down and she's here now. So I'm gonna go home. Okay, I guess I gotta wrap this up then. Dude, that went that went really fast. I've never seen you surf. Are they still on your channel? Yeah, Alan, all that stuff's on my channel. All right, let's wrap it up here. Sorry that's so overexposed. That's, that's even worse, that's better. So we're gonna wrap it up here. Um, tell that to the bra boys. Time flies when you're having rum, <laughs> gin. Yeah, that, that has gone quick. I, I, I thought, it, I, I didn't think we were any close. I didn't think we were anywhere near 5 p.m. How long have we been live for then? I don't even know. Oi, Benny. I'm not too sure what that means. Benny, I, look, I'm, I'm, I'm annoyed, but I'm going to, I'm going to sign up to the Kalbara Beach Board Riders Club and I want to meet, I want to, the other, okay, so there's, there's two things here. There's two things. I could stay as I am and keep doing my thing. These guys hate me. They hate that I'm doing this. They, they've told me they're going to smash my camera gear. So they don't, and, and, and. In many ways, I'll I'll respect it. I gotta pay my dues, right? Like if I'm up there surfing and the the, the the gurus are there, I'll back off. I'll let I'll go and surf another break. If it comes down to physical violence and threatening my gear, and what are we gonna egg my house and all that shit? Is that where this is headed? Well, if that happens, then that's not on. So what I thought was, if I joined up to the Colborough Beach Board Riders Club, at least I would be in a circuit of competition and I would go and compete and therefore I'd meet other surfers and I know the Borough Boys are in there as well I've seen seen a bunch of their names in the in the thing funnily enough I don't see Gavin Walker anywhere right you search Gavin Walker that's his name you search him anywhere on Kalbara Beach and surfing he doesn't come up so the guy is a phantom basically so what I'm saying is I need to protect myself I need to I need to surround myself with good surfers, with good crew, with dudes that aren't gonna fucking punch me for filming. Cause let's let's be clear, if I'm blowing up Colbara Beach, so are the Barra Boys. Yeah, they're not getting punched in the head. Why am I getting a punch to the head? I didn't do anything. Yet I'm getting punched in the head in the lineup. So there's that. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna wrap this up here. We're gonna call it a day. Um, and I'm gonna go, there's no D-Live stream tonight. I'm gonna go back and, shit, I gotta cook dinner. Uh, I'll, I'll cook dinner with the family and uh, we'll go on from there and I'll see you all on this next stream.
I don't know when that's going to be, but that's the next time this is going to happen. So, anybody got any closing statements? Anybody got any closing comments? I didn't think so. I'll see you all on D Live tomorrow for a Kong's 10 songs without Duncan, just good music and booze. See you then.